Welcome to Black Love Matters, where this serves a therapy session for figuring out adulthood. Loving each other. Or find our inner Brock Michelle. Or Jay-Z and Beyonce, or in this episode, child, I'm going to be messy. We're going to go with Nikki or, and Meek Mill. What? <laughs> they ain't together. I, are they not? They show this fighting like cats and dogs and an old married couple on that Twitter. Y'all take this lesson learned from Meek and Nikki. Don't don't put your stuff out there. Like I think this is the example where you can be transparent without being naked. Like transparency doesn't <laughs> involve just being naked. Mm-hmm. You can be very true to yourself and your fans, whatever it may be, without being completely naked. I think in this situation, Nikki and Meek Mills got naked. Oh, I don't, honestly, I don't even know what they're bickering about. It shouldn't even be something. You could tell they really loved each other at one time because if mm-hmm. you didn't love someone, you wouldn't even do this. Then Meek come back with a shady one. Let me go be with my pregnant girlfriend. What the hell? Did he say something like that. Knowing Nikki trying, don't do that to Meek. It was just messy. <laughs> What's wrong with them down there? They are on some petty shit. And then the thing is... I mean, they're human. But it's just like, y'all make too much money. Y'all have way too much of exposure. Y'all have way too many endorsements on the line to do this. Like, no one's on their team to be like, you make too much money for this. And I know you're human. But, like, they need to create, like, inner social media where people can just post to celebrities. If it's they need, like, a Facebook. You know how Facebook was only for people who went to college? Mm-hmm. They need to do, like, that type of social media only for celebrities so they can just air this stuff out to them. Because them exposing this to us normals is not appropriate. Mm. What do you think about that? I think celebrities don't like that. They, uh, yeah. I think it's interesting. Uh, yeah, these niggas, I don't know what the fuck they was doing. Because I have empathy for it, right? They're human. Everyone getting their feelings and emotions. But I was like looking in. It's like, Nikki, you have like this deal with Fendi. Meek, you like freeing people from jail. I thought you were going to say slavery. Which, <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? He's doing this huge movement. And then for both of them, to the universe in which they collide. Beating on women. Who I beat on? <laughs> I ain't beat on shit. <laughs> Supporting your rapey ass brother. What? I said, God <laughs> damn. damn. Like, mm. come on. I ain't got cl- pearls and I'm clutching them. Yes. Um. Uh, I'm just. I'm just being silly though. But yeah, honestly, what Meek and Meek, Nikki and Meek are doing, y'all do it in the streets too. So. Sure do. Honestly, I gave them grace. They're forgiven. Who is you? I'm Nero. And I'm Nyambi. And this is episode 305, y'all. Hey, episode 305. Happy be sh- Monday. Happy Monday. Be sure to leave one, two, three, four, five star rate and review on Apple Podcasts and on Stitcher. And follow us on all forms of social media at Black Loves That Matters. That's Black with no K. What's going on with you? Hey, y'all. I'm um, sorry. I promise y'all we're going to get a consistent cadence. The goal is for two days a week, but I'm sure I will let Nero explain what's going on. Uh, for the delay um but know that we will get on a consistent cadence the goal is for mondays and thursdays i know we haven't even made it official on our social media i'm trying to get like a month straight now so it feels good Mm. (laughs) but thank y'all for hanging in there um we still ain't done unpacking nope so hopefully as y'all listen to the podcast we only got a fourth of our apartment left so what we did yesterday sunday was literally power houred after we recorded the podcast and i had the macy's app open the amazon app and the Target app. And what I did was whenever we say we needed something, you know when you be like, you need something, you be bullshitting. Mm-hmm. Talking about, yeah, we need this shelf. And then it'd be year two. Do we ever get that shelf? Nope. Like, I'm literally putting orders for shit as we say we need it. We also like, probably need the Wayfair app, too. What's Wayfair? Oh, that, that furniture place? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I figure we're going to use Wayfair and stuff when we get, um, like, we need to get a new headboard and all that type of stuff. But I'm just talking about. Because they got the, decor and shit, too. I'm just near. See, near him. This is what he's doing. He's jumping. I'm just talking about the necessities we need to get rid of all boxes. Mm. So I'm talking about more organizational. Everything has a home. Everything has a place. Near him is talking about can we get this nice throw rug? <laughs> and we do need that. <laughs> but before we buy a throw rug, we have to make sure we have somewhere for our Cheerios to go. Mm. Because we no longer put cereal on top of the refrigerators because the top of the refrigerator is not a shelf. That's some white people shit. What? What you mean? The refrigerator is an additional se- shelf. The refrigerator, the top of the. Yes. Re- listen, you Negroes, all as far as my voice can be heard, Nyambi is making a nigga truth right now. The top of the refrigerator is not a shelf. Says who? Me. The top of a refrigerator. Honestly, it gets too hot, so anything you put on there is gonna be bad. That is not a shelf. N- niggas, go look in your kitchen right now if you have something on top of your fridge you need to get better storage because things aren't supposed to live there maybe a plant Lies. but other than a plant not ain't supposed to be no shelf Lies. 
Anywho, so we're still unpacking. I put all the cereal up there. No, what we can do is get some of those clear XO XO. Is that what they call? Is that that brand called? Yeah. Oh, is it? Is that? Is it a word? You know what I'm talking about? The XO X with yeah. the airtight. Mm-hmm. Good grips. Oh, is that what that is? Mm-hmm. Good grips XO XO. You know, you hit the button, it's airtight. Mm-hmm. You should put your cereal in that. And if you just go directly online, it's a little bit more expensive. But if you just go to Marshall's Weekly, eventually you'll be able to get a whole set of it too if you're more on a budget. But that's where your cereal belongs. That's where your nuts belong. That's where your granola belongs. Like, that's where those things belong. So not only are they airtight and protected, but they last longer. You're welcome. Wisdom from Nyambi. It's worth the investment. <sighs> Next, I don't know about that. Sir Jeffrey sent us gifts. He did. And I'm so excited about it. Jeff, I don't know what all this shit means. We got to make an appointment. So I'm not, I'm not, maybe I just need to take the phone from Nero because I'm supposed to be doing the social media. So Sir Jeffrey, what I have to do is make a consultation. You got to send me your Venmo so we can make a consultation and we know what to do. I see the Palo Santo one there. I, some of the stuff I know what to do with, some of the stuff I don't know what to do with. Mm-hmm. So we need to, if you listening, knowing that we're going to be reaching out on Instagram soon to make an appointment with you, let them know how it goes. And then maybe what we can do is after we have our consultation, Maybe all three of us could do the podcast together to talk about like what, like what this naturopathic medicine like was and what it worked for mm. and like what we were doing. Am I saying that right? I think so. I, I isn't that, what is it called when black people we use herbs? Oh, don't say we. No. Bohane. No, that is not oh. bohane. <laughs> but it's like because you know the Indian folks call it what is it? A, it starts with an A. 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 V. No, I'm about know. to start lying, but like it's a certain type of medicine and healing, right? That comes from like black people and like the earth, and oh. earth. it's more natural path. So we'll let y'all know how it go. But we're so grateful for the gift, Sir Jeffrey. Um, it's just been a minute because you know we've been unpacking, we got boxes everywhere. We literally have it sitting on like our island in a bag. That's like we have to connect connect with them to see what we need to do, how we need to do it, and when we need to do it. Right? Because I'm scared. Like, do I miss you? Mix scared? Up? I might mix all this shit up together. No, you don't, you don't do that. You don't mix it all together and you don't take these thick ass servants because I know about that. Mix it together, put it in some Kool Aid. Uh, I mean, maybe some of it will require some tea making. Oh. But Nero been a mix up a concoction over here that Lord knows what happened. But Sir Jeffrey, look for us reaching out to you sometime um, this week. It'll probably be a little bit later this week. We'll reach out to you and we'll find a time that works for you so we can connect. Um, but with longer terms, it may be coming to the podcast too, right? Mm-hmm. Anyway, what else is a be check in? Work is work. I'm just busy. It's finally balancing. But you know how whenever you make one win, most shit keep coming down a pipeline? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's how I'm feeling. But nothing to complain about. One thing I say in Silicon Valley, I can't complain about my work. It's a difference, right? I think at my previous jobs, I used to be stressed. But in Silicon Valley, it's not stress, it's pressure. And the difference between the stress and pressure at work is that we have actually the resources and the means to solve the things we're looking to do. Um, I think the only thing is Silicon Valley. We just move a thousand miles an hour. Yeah. Like we already not ahead. Like we're not the ones creating the future. Like, we're, and I'm not saying that to move at a fast pace, but sometimes I'm like, is there a reason we want this done in 48 hours and not next week? Like, I feel like every deadline or every email I get has in like what are those called parentheses or like brackets. in brackets, a response needed by EOD, response in needed in 248 hours. Where I feel like in my previous be it bot store or higher ed, I feel like you at least get a week or two. Right. To respond to any fucking email or any request needs at least two week notes. In Silicon Valley, they will send you an email at 10 a.m. and be like, I need a response at two. <laughs> I'm like, how do you know I'm even at my desk? Right. What if I got the bubble guts? Like, what are you talking about? <laughs> what if I'm oh, oh, oh? <laughs> they don't give a fuck. <laughs> and I would say that is the difference that I'm like, because I think I'm a little bit more casual. Mm-hmm. And not that I don't respond. And meanwhile, casual. I mean, I respond to emails in 24 to 48 hours. But sometimes I think what's irking me in Silicon Valley, niggas really literally be responding to emails in like three minutes. I'll say two seconds. And I'm like, God damn it. Did y'all even read the email? And maybe that's a me thing. Well, my team, they don't even send emails no more. Everything go on Slack. What's Slack for folks? Slack don't know? is like a, a online messenger for like businesses and things of that sort. Oh, it's like Google Hangout or I almost said Apple. Uh, what's almost said Apple, but Messenger. What's it called? Yeah. What's the uh, old I one? message or BBM? No. What's the real old? Would be in the chat rooms. Aim. Yeah, I almost said aim. <laughs> it's kind of like that. It's an instant <laughs> messenger for uh, companies. Yeah. Um, so people put their their full as uh, emails, emails in there. Oh my god! Because it's an instant messenger. I think more or less. If I'm thinking about like the pros and cons of working in Silicon Valley, that is one of the cons. 
Um, like, although you get, compared to my other jobs, complete autonomy, like working from wherever I want to work at, coming in, coming and going as I please, like that's there. But with that expectation, it's like almost a 24 hour on. Um, that's expected, but not expected. Mm-hmm. It's really strange. Like people are like, oh yeah, disconnect, no problem. No response needed. It was like, what a fucking... Or fucking responded in three minutes. What do right. you mean? Ain't no response. Lying ass. Because even as a manager, I try not to send. Because sometimes, excuse me, sometimes I like work online later because I'm in meetings from like nine to three, and I just don't got nothing to give from four to six. So I just come home and lay on my couch and make dinner, and then from like six to eight or like eight to nine, I'll go through and respond to the emails that came through the day. But even when I do that, I don't respond in that moment. I put like it for it to be sent out the next day because mm. my company uses gmail so like i can do like a delayed send mm-hmm. like so i don't get my direct report thinking they have to respond when i send an email at 10 p.m at night right but people don't give them a fuck no what? my boss like i told you my boss would just be up and just send a slack message but tell me what's the <laughs> what's the latest and the strangest slack message you got i think the one i just got recently was like Hey, this is weird, but the video that you just edit, it like when you when it's on autoplay, like it just cuts off my name. Like, can you add three seconds to the video to the start of the video? Yeah. I was like, what? At what time? That's the thing. At what time? You fucking uh, two fifty nine a.m. <laughs> <That's what I'm, laughs> I fuck? think it'd be more the time. It's not even a request, right? Because request is work. I am here to work. I get a check. I get PTO. I get health insurance. Cool. <laughs> and I'm like, but it's like at two and i'm like it's only people only calls and messages i get is when people be dying <laughs> that type of night but in silicon valley that's what ideas are creating right Child. um what else is going on with me i know this stuff with gail king y'all i was did, near Miami. did we just miss that news cycle do we gotta address it <laughs> <laughs> i hope not like I don't, I see multiple sides of this story. Like I feel like I want to peel each part apart of it. Did Gail, Gail have to ask that tacky ass question? No. Is Gail a journalist and supposed to ask tacky ass questions? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Do Gail and Oprah hate black men? No. You dramatic niggas. Was Snoop Dogg wrong for calling her? What he call Gail? A snag a tooth winch. What did he call her? <laughs> Was he wrong for that? Yes. Yes. Does Kobe at Legacy entangle everything from being a great mentor, great father, great basketball player to these allegations? Yes. As we all got a complicated past and future. What's the saying? Every sinner got a future and every saint got a past. Yes. Mm-hmm. Like. It's just like we live in the binary so much that it's almost, I think that's what's frustrating me is how much we live in the binary Mm -hmm. that two truths can't live in the same space. And y'all forgive Gail. You know, if we want to boycott her for about a month, nobody watches CBS. Do we even support Mm, Gail? That's what I'm saying. (laughs) Gail's not for us. You don't think so? See, I don't think, I'm not subscribing to. and, And what I mean by that, not to cut you off, but not like. Oh, I see what you did. You put a Nyambi, but it's cool. I can take it. I can take it and receive it. <clears throat> and and what I mean by that is, like, she's not for black people, but you know, this shit for black people. The, can I finish? Go. But the idea of Gail is not for black people. Ooh. And what I mean by that is I'm that, that. I'm that. Just like Oprah was for Middle America and mostly white women. White women. Yeah, I would say the same thing is for Gail. So True. why, you know, while she is a black woman and, you know, she does represent the black culture and, and she supports, you know, she supports see. and things yeah. of that sort, like her position and what she do yeah, isn't necessarily for us. Come on. Yeah. That's another T too. Yeah. Cause actually I've been having conversations with some of my direct reports and I'm hearing at my company, I'm talking to some of the folks who, cause for y'all don't know, a lot of my background is like diversity and equity and inclusion and wherever I go, I somehow slither my way into the work. Um, what I've made a promise to myself, though, is not to make it my primary role no more. It's just a supplementary mm-hmm. um, role. But I've talked to some of the folks who were like, they were trying to kind of recruit me for their team to do full diversity and equity. And I'm like, hell no, because um, I just don't got the bandwidth to do it. But it's exactly what you said, Nira. Like, by taking on the role in diversity and equity or being a representative, right, there's a little bit of, I don't want to say this funny because i know people who do this work are probably listening and your work is needed and is value but there's a certain game you have to play Mm. to 
one i don't even say this do the work you represent the company it's almost like diversity and equity to big companies and corporations are almost like hr Mm -hmm. hr is never there to really serve the people it's there to serve the company and i do believe a lot of not believe i know a lot of diversity officers or diversity offices although there are support systems for folks they're at their top priority is to always serve the the business of that company too. Correct. So I think a little bit is that at play and all that circling back to, I remember I was talking to one of the higher ups at my company who does diversity and equity because y'all know wherever I go, I got to take the children along because the children are the future. <laughs> I, I don't know. They just become, you know, I'd be number one auntie and Miami, they be coming I to me. The children you know, I believe the, the children are the future and they be getting on my nerves. You hear me? Teach them well and help them. They the ones the hardest well. part of my job, mentoring them. <laughs> I think the other shit is mental and they hard headed ass. Um, and I guess one of the higher ups came to me because she sent me one of her folks, one of the lower folks. And was like, yeah, someone so did you get them together? Da, 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 da. And I'm like, they got good intentions, but they just don't know. And what the higher up told me, she was like, see what you youngest. And I think she was trying to school me too. What you youngest don't know is I don't know why you think you came to this company. Think you was going to be no activist. If you wanted to be an activist, you should take your ass on the front line, not work in this company. I said, oh my God. I said, ma'am, I'm doing your work. But she was saying, like, it is a difference. If you are here to be an activist, that is not what this is for. Do you know what that job description says? Do you know what the ROI is? And that's what you need to be. But if you're here to do what these two, three things is, cool. But out of other shit, miss me with it. Right. And that's basically what she said. Um, and she said that's and she's one of the first people who's been in DEI in big positions who like literally just sat and, and it wasn't even to me like it was like because I was telling her like you know I'm trying to be the bridge I'm the bridge right, right. and she was like listen she was <laughs> I gave it a little more Detroit but she's like tell them hoes <laughs> if they want to be in the streets go be in the streets but know that it ain't gonna come along with the check it ain't gonna come along with X Y and Z but know that's the sacrifice they need, fights they need to make they can't have their cake and eat it too right and I was like I hear you. You can. Mama. <laughs> and and I'm sure other folks hear me. I'm not only in middle management in my career, but I feel like I'm in middle management in my life. <laughs> so meaning like I'm in the clean 30s. I done had a little bit of lived experience. I done seen, you know, colonizer colonize. I done had a little life happen to me, but I'm still young. I still bop to the Migos and um baby, right? So I, I see where the children are coming from, but I also see from where the elders are coming from. And a lot of times, like, y'all know what I'm talking about to be that bridge. When you in the bridge before t- between two of them, when the elders be like, go talk to them kids born in 2000. And then the kids in 2000 talking about Miss May being mean to me. Because you know how Miss May, you know, it's respectability politics right. in play. So I don't know. That's something. I, that's what I see what's happening with Gail, too. Mm-hmm. Where it was like, oh, I feel like I'm the middle manager again. To be like, Auntie Gail. I know Gail and Oprah don't like to be called Auntie, but they still being called Auntie. Right. Actually, they about to be mother. Um, you know you wrong for that. Then I got to go to the children. Now, wait a minute. Y'all can't be tearing down. Snoop. I'm like, now you know you wrong. You can't be doing that shit now. <laughs> can't who be Snoop was, who was Snoop talking to? It's like, can I do who it? Who said yes? Can, can I do it? Oh, yeah. bucket. Yeah. Oh, what do you call it? Snagatooth lion know what looking you bitch. I said, oh my God. <laughs> oh, funky the, bitch. Because the thing is, I heard Snoop first. I was like, oh, Gail had to say something ridiculous. They right. had to catch her at the um at the Popeyes getting chicken and talking shit about us, right? I'm thinking Gail done went off. And I was like, that was wrong, but Snoop. And then on Instagram, I'd rather he just texted it to her. Oh, funky bitch. <laughs> so that's my stance on the Gail King. I know it ain't really a st- stance because I was real middle manager about it. But, you know, what's your thoughts? And the thing is, I think it, it was just bad timing, girl. It was just all of it was bad. I think it was bad timing. I think, did she need to ask this shit and his funeral ain't happened yet? No. Like, no. But because she asked it when they do his biopic and then whoever does biopic strategically leave it out of it. Right. Fuck yes. Yeah. <laughs> or like, did it come up when he was getting an Emmy or Oscar or whatever it was for Dear Basketball? But no one cared then. No. You know, everyone's attention span is short. Mm-hmm. <sighs> near him it's just a lot mm-hmm. and i get it but like, everybody wrong and i think we need to forgive each other on this one this is yeah. one i think everyone was had a part to play and additionally i think look i'm bringing kobe back into it. i think kobe will want us all to forgive each other and move on <laughs> <laughs> true yes that is my stance forgive move on everyone was a little out of pocket you know everyone grieves what near him would you tell us how grief show up mm, anywhere they wanted to go grief will show up anyway mm-hmm. <sighs> po vanessa 
I'm sure Vanessa ain't even hear what's going on. She don't give a fuck. No. Shout out. what's going on with you? Um, so the reason why we have a podcast last week is all on me. My work. Work has just been getting rampant. So just doing a lot of work and then uh, you know, I can't Naomi came home and she's like, So you just doing it? I said, I gotta work. I was like, I don't, first of all, I done ran home from the city. So a bitch been up since like five thirty AM. Gotta work. And then went w- traveled to the city. But I was like, I worked, can stop work. I can stop working. Travel do it. back down here. Not only that, prep the podcast as I was riding the cow train back. So I'm nauseous. And nauseous I told you I can sweating. do it. And, and I come like, through the nah. door. And near I'm like, oh, I got about an hour and a half left of work. Meanwhile, it's already like 8 p.m. I said, who the fuck you think going to be recording a podcast at midnight? I can't even get it out. <laughs> <laughs> who, who you think going to be recording a podcast at midnight? And or if we record the podcast first, you don't even stay up past 1030. So your work ain't going to get done. A.K.A. my bills ain't going to get paid. No, ma'am. So work had to come first, y'all. So we 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 working this out. We working that, but no, we we not going nowhere. Like don't yeah. ever think we just appear. And we're yeah. gonna if it's ever gonna be our last, we will tell you. Like yeah. this is our last show. Thank you. But <laughs> so it, don't think we disappear. Yeah, it's just a lot of things going on. Like you yeah. know, we moved. My work is ramping up as well as like my business and like my health and fitness stuff with everything that's coming out with this big launch. You know, my app. Um, it, it's just a lot of great things that are happening that. Um, I'm still trying to figure out how to manage it all, right? Yeah, and I think that's, that's the real. hard part. That's real. Uh, because, like, truthfully, when that's I nice. when when we started this podcast, like, we both went had no jobs. And we really had no jobs, right? Child. So we can spend as much time on social media as we want to create little fancy videos, you know, record long ass podcasts. Child, we I, all I did do. was go to church and record the podcast. And then when I went to got the bot store, it was a moment where all I did was go to church, record the podcast, and go to the bot store, right? And now, like, shit is, you know, shit is just ramping up. So, just trying to figure out, like, a happy medium between, you know, doing the podcast but still getting work done as well as, like, my other endeavors as well, right? Yeah. And it, it's a it's a balance that I'm working on. And, you know, it, it does create a lot of anxiety as well. So, yeah. um, like, that's one of the things I talked to my therapist about this weekend. Um, over the past week was, like, anxiety and, like, how it comes up and things of that sort. Uh-huh. And we talked about, like, how... <clears throat> how to name it like where where does it show up at so you can realize it as well mm-hmm. as you know this whole notion of slowing down so i have a good friend named jt and we had a conversation about like slowing down and he recently had a stroke so he was an ex uh, football player and he recently mm-hmm. had a stroke so he's like i talk slow so like there's no way around it like i just talk slow you and have to. Yeah. you're gonna have to slow down if you want to talk to me it's like you know you need to hear this and you hear these messages and, like, both of them, coming after, like, both of their conversations, like, both of them had the whole thing of, like, slowing Hold on, down. Both of who? Oh, the therapist my and ther- JT. My therapist and JT. Gotcha. I had this whole notion of, like, slowing down. And it's like, yeah, near I'm like, I understand that, you know, we've, you've been in a predicament where you have to scratch and claw yeah. to get your way and, like, have plan A, plan B, plan C. And, yeah. Uh, and, like, had to, like, overcome, like, you are a bona fide overcomer and you just don't quit on shit and, like, we know that you want to make your shot. Like, this is a big opportunity. You know, you got a lot of shit going on. And, like, yeah. this is, you know, it's like eight, it's like eight miles. Like, this is your one shot. And it's like, you understand, but if you don't slow down and enjoy, like, the things that are coming, mm-hmm. like, you're going to look up and all this shit is going to be gone. Yeah. And I think another thing that JC talked about was, like, the only validation you need is, like, yourself. Mm. He's like, so, you know, I can talk to you about, like, different things and contracts and things of that sort and like getting screwed over or whatever, whatever. But the only validation you need is yourself. And like, that's the thing you need. That's true. Niram. Um, I've even been battling this idea of being, especially even working in Silicon Valley. So to connect the dots between the cubicle warriors and entrepreneurs, Mm -hmm. a lot of people like, Oh my God, isn't that highly competitive in Silicon Valley? And it is. And I think that's a mistake that a lot of young professionals come in. They try to be competitive Mm -hmm. when in actuality to be successful, you have to be ambitious. Right. And the difference between being competitive and ambitious is being competitive is you against other people. Right. Right. Comparing yourself against other people, beating that other person, being ambitious is between you yourself 
Mm-hmm. And how do you beat yourself? And how are you a little bit better each time? And when you shift that frame and when you shift that mindset, it, make the, it makes things so much easier. It makes things so much more fluid. And you come from more of an authentic and original space. And if you look at all the, any of the folks who've made it, they ain't been in competition with other folks, mm-hmm. right? You think of these big companies, they weren't doing it to beat somebody else. Right. They were doing it to beat themselves or something they wanted. And if you notice all the other companies who came up who were trying to beat these other companies never did. Right, it's right, almost right. like when you run in a race and you look behind you and you fall. Mm-hmm. That's what it feels like. But that is something that definitely comes with age and maturity. Like when people are like, oh, I'm so competitive. I'm like, I'm not. I'm not competitive at all. But what I am is super ambitious. Mm-hmm. I really don't give a fuck if you beat me at uh, Monopoly. <laughs> but I get, But I need to beat myself when it comes to this retirement account next year. Right. Child, I need to put more than I did last year. That's the competition. Like, that's the ambition. Like, you know, it's just a difference in mindset. And I think me and Nia always used to laugh. And I think this is what's like the foreshadow when we be like, I don't like to play games because I went at life. Yeah. So <laughs> that was us being, you know, young and arrogant, but it's kind of manifested that way. Right. Yeah. It, that was an unrefined way of saying I'm not competitive. I'm ambitious. It's a difference. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. No, but it, it, it is that thing. And I think that had that brought me back to when we was moving. And I am like, you got all these goddamn trophies and shrines to yourself. <laughs> And I was like, if I go before you, I want you to read down every accomplishment that I've accomplished. Neil got all these shrines. I don't even think I got, y'all, I don't got nothing but my diplomas. You don't know what else I done participated in the last 30 plus years. All I got is three pieces of, two pieces, three, two, two pieces of paper. Mm -hmm. Three, if you include high school. Only got three pieces of paper to validate I have accomplished a degree. Everything else, you have no idea what I've been in. Meanwhile, I got trophies. Neil got all types of trophies and and placards. That's it, what the fuck? Hey, I just participate in a lot of shit. But like it's those things of like validation, right? Like yeah. you get these trophies and shit because like That's real, it's man. somebody else telling you like, yeah, you did a Made good it. job versus the validation you need for yourself. I know I did a good job. And like being like, I know I did a good job regardless of these things. So yeah. like that's the conversation I've been having with my therapist because he's it's like, huge. well, like what do you like what happens when you get these things? And it's mm. like I just feel empty. And I was like, empty sure. is not the word. I guess so. Like, I just don't feel nothing. Like, oh, I got it. Cool. But, like, you don't, like, feel proud or anything like that. So, like, most of the time, I just feel sad because mm. the journey is done. Mm. So, you know, just talking about that and, like, practicing self-compassion mm-hmm. um, is another thing that I'm working on to just really uh, trying to digest as well. It's like, how do you provide compassion to yourself when you've been brought up where compassion was never taught to you yeah. or provided to you? Yeah, or they don't know what it looked like themselves. Right. Yeah. So, like, what does self-compassion look like? And, like, how in a world where, like, we provide conf- compassion to, like, everybody else, mm-hmm. like, you know, and, like, and I'm just saying, like, broadly, like, Black Lives Matter, you know, the Me Too movement, you know, the the dolphins, the whales, the, At you know, you right. know, uh, LGBTQ uh, issues and everything like that. Like, we've got to provide all this compassion for, like, these other uh, populations and under underserved communities yeah. that sometimes we just forget to just provide compassion to the person in the mirror. Yeah. Yeah. It's not a, like a black self care matters movement. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> True. True. I agree. And so, you know, those are some of the things that's going on. And the other thing is that we had a, a little cool date night the other night. Um, yeah. We had some Kool-Aid. I had had Kool-Aid in a long time. Shout out to Black History Month. Near and I, I'm being slack in this Black History Month. Mm-hmm. Usually, we really try to go all out. Maybe we'll try to head to the museum or something there. Um, but we've been, I guess slacking out the way. We're doing the best we can. But we always try to like do a date or dinner night. We had to look for a black business in the South Bay, which is hard. Mm-hmm. You know, usually you usually can go to Oakland. Nira, what is your thing with going to Oakland? Oakland is far as hell. Oakland is not it far. Is. It's literally like 30 Like we or 40 live miles. in the South Bay. Like, have you tried to drive to Oakland <laughs> during month, do business hours? Oh, no, I'm not doing that. Hell no. Nah. You want to talk about you want to drive to Oakland on a Friday at 6 p.m.? We ain't going to get there until midnight. <laughs> no. You hate Oakland. I don't hate <laughs> Oakland. <laughs> But the times you want to go, you want to go at Friday at 5. I said, let's go to Oakland. It's, it's Black History Month. Like, we ain't really been participating. In, we haven't been in the literature like we should. Like, let's at least go support a black business. Let's go support a black restaurant. I said, I can go Saturday at noon. I said, what? And, and Oakland ain't even open. <laughs> <laughs> you know how we do. You show up to the place, they be like, we still cooking. I'm like, what? <laughs> you should have came yesterday. Yeah, That's we somebody. still putting the ribs on the grill. What? It's like somebody my uncle. It'll be ready in two hours. <laughs> The fuck I supposed to do for two hours? 
go sit at Merritt Lake. <laughs> but we found this spot. We had Kool. They had Kool. They had red and purple Kool Aid, and it was amazing. Um, I think it's strawberry and grape. No, it was cherry and grape. They actually had some good chicken wings. You yeah. said they calf was it catfish or was yeah. it? You said it wasn't seasoned as good. No, they needed a little bit more salt in their batter. Yeah, like, isn't the purpose... Child, I need to be slowing down anyway, all this inflammation. But <laughs> <laughs> but ain't the purpose of having, like, fish... Like, I do miss that sometimes out here. It's like, y'all missing the salt. Like, it's supposed yeah. to be salt on the seafood. Like, it does miss that sometimes. Yeah, it was missing. It was good. It was fresh. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it, was it, was just, it was just it was just missing a tad bit of salt. And as my father say, overpriced. My father almost refuses to go to soul food restaurants. Like he complains the high entire time. I am not eating green. I'm not eating thirty dollar <laughs> greens. <laughs> my father like to the point where I can't take him to it. Like I, I cannot. He was like macaroni and cheese, eight dollars. Oh, <laughs> I make a whole pan. I can make a whole pan for eight dollars. <laughs> And it just ruins the experience. <laughs> or they'll do like the chicken wing deal. It'll be like three or four chicken wings for like fifteen, twenty dollars. What? I can buy a bag of chicken. I can wings. buy a bag of chickens. <laughs> like eat the damn chicken wings. <laughs> and they just be ruin your whole experience. Eat a bag of chicken, chicken drumettes. That's why if he come, he asks for any type of soul food. Either I gotta make it, or I'm like, we'll go to Popeyes because mm-hmm. I cannot take him to a soul food restaurant. No, because I used to take him um, to back home. We did it back home, and we did it in like white ass New England. He'd mm-hmm. be like, lima beans, five dollars. You know how many bags of lima, lima beans, beans I can like, buy for pounds? My, at least ten pounds of lima beans. <laughs> But the food was good. Yeah. Yeah, some needed a little bit more salt. But you could t- honestly, Lons is fresh. Mm-hmm. I can add salt to a plate. Right. So it was really good. Other than um, that, you want to head to some pillow talk? Yeah, let's do some pillow talk. Oh. Jesus. Should we start with the bullshit of the presidential election primaries and debates? Sure. After you, ladies first. Trash. <laughs> I think that's just my reoccurring thing with this whole thing. Like, mm-hmm. should we start at the primaries? Well, by now. Has the New Hampshire one happened? Probably not. Is New Hampshire one Monday? I'm not uh, sure. It doesn't matter. See. It's this week. I know. It doesn't matter because I'm not even talking about it. It doesn't matter. Okay. Let's talk about Iowa. Can we talk about the distraction that we had in Iowa? How y'all tore down that poor company that's called Shadow. I mean, the name is bad. Um, it sounds sketchy. But y'all going to let this man who created this app to get more exposure in more accessibility and more transparency around the primary process. And not only it wasn't, what was it targeted or it wasn't like infiltrated. He was just making sure the numbers were appropriate. Mm -hmm. You niggas destroyed him. When meanwhile on a ranch, we had a whole ass president that basically what's it called? Like he was impeached, but he wasn't kicked out of office, Mm -hmm. but we decide to trash this app and from from y'all who've been living under the rug you got the iowa primaries that happen instead of like doing it a more traditional way they had an app where folks to submit the primaries are honestly the primaries aren't even important like it's more symbolic you mean the caucus the caucuses yes it's not even uh yes i'm sorry i'm saying the wrong word aren't hugely important they're more symbolic because that's how we kind of casually peel back who the next candidates are Mm mm-hmm Right, like usually it's not written in stone that you have to fall back, but usually after after you after you lose so much, you kind of gracefully bow out of the race. So by the time you get to the end, we're down to like maybe one or two people, like the two people, maybe yeah. three. Then we do the big vote and figure out which one is going to be like a candidate. So like honestly, it's getting back to well, even what's the purpose of it? So I'm hoping that everything happens in divine order. So I'm hoping this shakeup with Iowa then lets us zoom out to say what is the. What is the purpose of these caucuses? Honey, I hope it could continue the domino effect of what is the purpose of even the Electoral College? Because I think it came out that didn't Buttigieg, 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 I can't Buttigieg. because you always Buttigieg. fuck it Buttigieg. up. Buttigieg won. Buttigieg. Buttigieg. Yeah, yeah, Buttigieg won the whatchamacallit, the actual caucus. Mm-hmm. But Bernie had won, the popular vote. Pop, like, what the fuck is going on? Like that type of shit has to stop. And hopefully more and more examples of this, that we have like radical change in our electoral um, election process and season. But overall it's just trash. And I think even I'm kind of talking about two things at once. So I'm talking about like these caucuses, like scapegoating, how they did that man on the app. Like y'all fucking destroyed that man life. It was unnecessary. Um, Then on the flip side, this impeachment stuff, like, 
y'all niggas manifested that Donald Trump was going to get away from it. Yeah. It was absolutely manifested because you even the media is trash. Like I am, you know, that's the one thing I think Donald Trump was right about. Fake fucking news. The media is trash. They do what they want to do mm-hmm. because the media started like, oh, yeah, we're doing his impeachment trial, but most likely he would not be removed from office. Why the fuck would you start the sentence like that? Right. And it kept saying over and over and over again where we honestly could have used the shit that was going on with the app in these caucuses as a slant to say not what was going on with this tech company but why is the american people so nervous about infrastructure and terrorists in meddling in elections well it's because we have this shady ass fucking president and maybe this is even more reason that he needs to be removed from office mm-hmm. that wasn't the slant that the media take no but meanwhile on the ranch they try to get this honest and it was a liberal company that was on hillary's election right to trash and bring down this company and destroy all their stuff where the, the attention truly needs to be on donald trump and the fucking congress and all this shady shit that's happening and like i think that's what pissed me off what what donald trump has done beautifully and we don't give him this props about is he has single-handedly shift and manipulated the american norms of society when it comes to the government in this presidential process because as we're saying some of this stuff some of the stuff is illegal some of the stuff is not illegal Mm -hmm. and what he's doing is slowly moving the needle on what's acceptable and what's not acceptable and what's happening is the republicans is playing into this shit and instead of the Democrats changing the game, meeting them at their level, right, or, you know, trying to shift norms themselves, they're still playing by the old fucking rules. But meanwhile, the the Democrats are playing Monopoly and Donald Trump and them is playing craps on the street. Right. What's it called when you throw in dice? Yeah. Two fucking different games. And it's like you're not going to win with that shit. Like, and I know respect to the Obamas and Michelle and them, and they go ho- low and we go high, but we might need to hire a hitter. <laughs> Which, <laughs> I agree. Like, it is just, we are not speaking the same language and it's not fucking working. Mm-mm. And like that's what even worries me about these bitch ass debates. I'm sick of Lizzie and Biden and Bernie and all them white people up there <laughs> fighting amongst each other. Like, I'm sick of that shit. Y'all need to go ham on President Trump. We need to do something revolutionarily different. Like, and what would it look like if they like, we ain't debating shit. We want to talk about how trash Trump is. Like, can we just shake some shit up? We don't want to do our debates now. We want to do the debates with the president now. Mm Mm-hmm. Like what, what What would it mean for them just to shake it up and just do something completely revolutionary with the age of social media? What is a clap back to Donald Trump look like? Right. Like what? Ah, it just it just makes me so upset that it's like we're scared. It feels as if we're scared or we're hiding behind these respectability po- politics. But by us hiding behind these respectability politics, millions of people lives are being affected and changed people are dying at these camps people are like they don't have jobs they're being like racially profiled or discriminated black men are being killed in the street all for the namesake of the 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 window dressing of what the the democracy is supposed to be in america right and it just that's the piece that i'm just i'm honestly upset with all parties across the board i get it (laughs) am i too much i get too worried up and then they got you know the AOCs and all them. That's fine. You stop playing by the fucking rules. Who gonna get in there and like who is the Democratic Donald Trump? You gonna get in his ass? Who is going to get in that everyone's ass though? Because Donald Trump, I would argue, has gotten in everyone's ass. He's you like, I care. dare you. I dare you to do this shit. Anybody that's not against any anybody that's against his agenda, he goes at them. He goes at them re- relentlessly. Period. Ain't no working together. Ain't none of that shit. No, it ain't working together. It's working for me. Right. And I, no, of course, that's not the type of government society we want. But we need to do what we need to do to get back power. Because the way they tip tapping around this motherfucker, that motherfucker is going to be riding down um, Pennsylvania B- Boulevard in the next year. Yeah. Because it's fucked up. This is. I, I think this is the most fucked up thing. And maybe we needed this Donald Trump to, to, yeah. to change the system That's because true. all these old ways is just not working. Yeah, and I almost want to say working. all them folks up there can go have a seat. Lizzie can have a seat. Bernie, Budich, that woman from Hawaii, that woman who in the army she always got her army's own gear on. That black man, mm. I like Tom. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> everyone maybe can have a seat. 
Mm-hmm. And maybe we need some just some different shit up there because also they've been in there for a while. And and other thing is none of them are polarizing enough. No, I, that's what I said. I need someone polarizing to be like the president. I need a kind gay before this happened. Before Jesus, never mind. Mm-hmm. Uh, to be like Donald Trump hates black people. Like just to say things just very explicit, mm-hmm. and not only to the camera but to Donald Trump. Right. To be like you absolutely hate people, and like I mean, even if we go to the State of Union that Donald Trump executive produced, like it was a great reality show. Who the fuck was he to give Rush Limbaugh the fucking Medal of Freedom? Get the fuck. You know what my black ass to do? I'm giving Louis Farrakhan. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? Right. What the fuck? Yeah. What the fuck was that? How? Who does it have to get passed through to get the Medal of Freedom? That you cannot, I, Mabel, you quiet too now. You cannot <laughs> tell me Nancy didn't know Rush Limbaugh was getting the Medal of Freedom. Who who was that vetted through? Like nobody. Someone has to write Rush Limbaugh on the medal name, and someone's gonna be like, "So we giving it to him?" <laughs> and then here come the whites where he dying of cancer. So, so what? Now I'm Gail King. So what? And let's talk about this racist shit. <laughs> You done did. Homophobic. Xenophobic. Right. Autophobics. Like just the just the whole comedy of it all. And I think the other thing is that when it's all said and done, the GOP are, is just standing firm like fucking fire hydrants. They are not fucking moving. They are only one who moved was Mitt. And Mitt brought the Lord into it. <laughs> Mitt said the Lord said. Mitt said, I gotta meet my maker, honey. <laughs> and when I go to my maker, he gonna be like, "Did you do what you supposed to do?" You know, Mick Mormon, honey, they don't mm-hmm. play. They don't play. And he said, "Me and my maker ain't gonna be in in line." And honestly, I don't care if he was just doing that to gases. I'm just glad he fucking did it. Right. But he was the only one who crossed the party line. Yeah, and we only needed one more person. One more person. Yeah. Where is um McCain when you needed him? Right. I bet McCain wanted to rise up from the earth <laughs> and just stomp through. I say no. no. <laughs> but it's just, uh, and all that stuff did nothing but get middle America, the MAGA supporters riled up. Yeah. And ready to go. It's fucked up. And I've just had points where I'm just looking like, what are we going to do here? Who do you think going to win it? Who do you, you think it's going to be Lizzie Biden or Bernie? I, I honestly, know. can we just get to there? Can we just have everyone else have a seat? Yeah, it's either going to be it's <laughs> Lizzie Biden. Don't you say Buttigieg. No, Lizzie it ain't gonna be Biden, Yang Gang. But did you shut the hell up? Did you say Yang Gang? Yeah. No. I don't know if he's. Have you heard him talk about any politics? I don't know, but <laughs> only reason I say that is because out here in Silicon Valley, they love Yang Gang guys. They love Yang. Everybody at work be talking about him. Are you they be Asian? Signs. Are they Asian? Some are Indian. Some are Asian. Near him, Indian is Asian. Oh, okay. Okay, <laughs> we're gonna get a map. We're gonna get a map. So out. like they always talking to me. So Yang game might win Silicon what Valley. The f- yeah, and that is a big vote. That's a lot of money too. Mm-hmm. Okay, Yang gang. Honestly, great. He'll be better president than Donald Trump. I'm cool with that. But could he beat Donald Trump? Like, what is Donald Trump? When Donald Trump get up there talking crazy to Yang, I need him not to keep talking about $1,000. <laughs> <laughs> like, I need him to pull another car. I'm not against him. If he become the final person, I'm bone for his ass. I'm Yang Gang too. But is he going to have something more than $1,000? Is Bloomberg... And Asians being smart. I'm sorry. Is Bloomberg Democratic or Republican? Honestly, I don't care. Because his ass is running. And I see his commercials. And I don't even know... I ain't seeing his ass in no, diver, no debate, no nothing. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what the hell he is. I think Bloomberg might be running the opposition. He might be Republican. <laughs> I'm trying to figure out. Is he Republican? Or, He's uh, Republican. He yeah. is. Can I vote for Bloomberg? <laughs> Look, Nero, no, we Republican. <laughs> is that the is that the plan, y'all? Do all the blacks do we transition to Republican and get behind Mike Bloomberg? <laughs> <laughs> I would rather Mike Bloomberg be president than Donald Trump. And don't get me wrong, Mike is Mikey is problematic. But he's not to the level problematically pr- problematically problematic as Donald Trump. His ass be having them commercials with Obama. I work with Obama. Y'all know y'all like Obama. I, it does me. I do. You like Obama? I'm like Cat Williams. Remember he watching them late night commercial? I do like Obama. <laughs> well, guess what? I worked with him. And no, you notice Obama ain't have him pull him. Because, <laughs> you know, he could easily have them pull. Obama said, let him run, honey. 
You like Obama? Look at us shaking hands. Yes, I do. Look at him smiling with me. Guess what? I shook his hand. <laughs> this me. That's all it takes. Cool. <laughs> you shook his hand. You got cool. my vote. You took my vote. Shit. But I don't know. What are y'all thinking of the um, this our government now? It's about to be a hard, rough month until election. This is gonna take us through the holidays, ain't it? Yes. Jesus. Can I just vote now? Because <laughs> I'm just voting straight party. So that's the only thing I'm looking for. Exactly. Oh my goodness. What else you want to talk about now? Um, we can talk about the sorry ass power episode. So by now, if y'all haven't seen it, spoiler alert, niggas. Power in this last fucking episode in this series finale. <sighs> We waited six episodes to see one episode to find out that Tariq killed Ghost. I thought it was Ramona. <laughs> <laughs> but as we start going on and on, I was like, oh, Tariq did it. But this is... <sighs> my nigga, did you say Ramona? Sorry, y'all. My phone was ringing. Yes. I didn't even see Ramona in the last Me either. episode. She wheezy out it. She helping Mike Bloomberg. Go ahead. She got the fuck on. But this whole thing about power and like these power books, all I wanted for my life was Tariq dead. Now he gonna have his own he series. Have his own show. Are we watching it? Probably. Probably. I hate watching. I'm it. invested now. Fuck. Oh, I'm sorry. I done caught air. Mm-hmm. Um. So do all these other power books, and why are we calling them power books? I don't like that. So are all these other power series starting at the same time? I don't know. Or are they gonna be like delayed out? Is it gonna be like Love and Hip Hop? Like that is like year round. <laughs> Do you know? What I'm saying? Yeah. So when one in, that'd be actually be hot. Mm-hmm. Then the next one, but no, Courtney got to sleep. She can't be on all the time. I don't know. So are we starting next with Tariq? Yep. Yeah. I mean, I would hope, but also with Lorenz Tate. Mm. Like it's, you can't wait years for these things. Like right. we can't just pause. Tommy one, we could probably wait a little bit. So that's the thing. So that's all these, the only one I'm interested in. So all these series is gonna be happening parallelly, like these last six episodes. I think they're all gonna be having parallel, um, except the one for the Tariq. There's gonna be parallel, but it looks like the one with Tariq is in it. It's like half of the show. It's like flash forwards and flashbacks. Mm. So it looks like they're doing. Am I getting that right, or am I separating that one with the Rise of Canaan? So we're doing know. the back history of Canaan too, right? Mm-hmm. So I would imagine maybe that's separate then. So maybe Tariq has his own thing. The rise of Canaan is kind of pre the prequel. Mm-hmm. Then you have the Tommy one. Then you have Lorenz Tate. Did I do them all right? I think so. I don't know. And then you got a Tasha one. Don't Tasha, Tasha one? Tasha's the one with Tariq. So oh. I imagine they're in the same universe, right? So gotcha. I imagine while she's serving jail time. Just like they mirrored him at the L end that she was going to jail, he was going to college. Mm-hmm. So I see those time periods like their experience is supposed to be mirrored towards each other. So she's like playing Cookie Lion. <laughs> <laughs> she playing Cookie? Yeah, so she gonna come out like Cookie. Did you see the outfit they put her in? And that's what she gonna come out in 10 years. <laughs> oh, shit. Oh, There's so many plot. I don't even know where to start, but so many plot holes. I hate that we had to wait six damn episodes to For get that. here. This could have been like two or three. It like, didn't have to be six. Why do we have to see everybody's point of view? We could have actually ended this by the holiday. I didn't need. We could have enumerated pause. Yeah. We didn't need no we didn't pause. Need to know any of that. Tommy episode was good. Yeah. Uh, so keep Tommy's. Who else we had an episode though? Dre. We ain't need his really. We ain't really need Dre's. Like we didn't care about. I like Lawrence Tate. We didn't care about his baby mama or that hollering ass baby. Yeah. So you could have got rid of Pies and Dre and kept Lorenz Tate, um, Tommy, Tommy in the final. In the final. I agree. How did that white man get his job at? Is it just because white gone white? Yes, because he a white man and privilege always going to keep him afloat. God damn. I said, how did he turn around from that? Poor Tasha. Um, Courtney, can we watch that after show? And I've been saying, I don't know if Courtney like black women because Tasha been going through and she's like, no, I did that on purpose. I'm like... Courtney, I don't think I need more. Listen, Tyler Perry. I mean, Courtney Kemp. I want to be like, listen, Tyler. Because Nyambi was like, oh, Tasha, uh, uh, Courtney. Courtney Kemp hate black women. Why Tasha always going through it? Not only going through it, but also it's a little stupid, too. Like, she's so smart, but so stupid at the same time. Like, it was even hard for me to hold Tasha. Like, because some of the moves she made was real smooth and real, like, clever. And then other moves, I'm like, Tasha. Mm-hmm. Like, the move when she was trying to cover up that man, like... 
sis, you ain't even think that out. Yeah. You literally, it just popped in your head and you made a phone call. Yeah, I'm going to go fuck him and put the gun in there and call the police. Yeah, and be I'm, there. And you know that nigga hood nigga, so what he go do? Go snitch. Not even snitch. This nigga's like, I'm going to go get a Red Bull. Yeah. Oh, to get his cover story? Yeah, yeah. you always have an alibi. You be somewhere, and you're in New York, you always go somewhere when you got um camera shot. Mm-hmm. So he ain't even trust her to begin with. Yeah. I don't know why they just didn't let the Dre storyline kill them out. Me too. I've just been like, my word against yours. Right. He did. Dre did. <laughs> he did it. You see, the white man was willing to go with it. Because that's because Tariq. Like, you hear him, he was like, obviously Dre did it. Because Tariq was like, I seen you there <laughs> with a gun. Oh. What was he doing there? I don't know. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. Like, like, that was a plot hole, too. That's what I'm saying. Like we see his ass with a gun. Like why was he there? And then why is that um lady who be talking with her mouth closed, with her eye be? Why was she? People only got one time to hit me in my fucking eye. I'm leaving. <laughs> I'm like, I'm really not interested in that. Oh my god! Like even that, like why she should she be arrested? She done did some shady shit too. All of them have. And that's what I was like, bitch. Maybe you should just let this lie. Lying dogs lie, and they keep talking about for this the undercover guy. That nigga dead. <laughs> Dre dead too. He dead. Just dead. I gotta leave this poison. It's like Outsider, y'all. We start watching Outsider on HBO. Jesus, niggas just start. Should I not? I know not give it away. People who start dying, their whole family begin to die. <laughs> God damn, what's happening? You know, I get to looking around. Yeah. Why everybody dying? But I don't. I'm gonna watch the other ones. I, I'm mad. I'm not gonna hear it's the big rich world no more. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna miss that. What else was so inspiring to you? I mean. What's his name? Trick. He acted well, but I hope he can go on a different note. He mean dead. So you know, as he grown mature, maybe he'll be able to hit more notes. Like better, better. Yeah, because he's a kid, so he did great for a kid. But it's like, is he gonna be able to carry a whole series? Mm-hmm. I'm not sure if I want to watch Tariq for a whole series for a whole know. sixty minutes. Tariq. Yeah. Jesus. To mm. see his ass do Tariq shit. Just to do Tariq shit. To basically, we about to watch him do choke shit. Where he go to choke? Yeah, like it's about to be that whole season again. Mm-hmm. I don't know if I'm interested. And how the fuck this nigga get to go to college with no degree? No, that don't surprise me. The fuck? That's why I wasn't mad at them white people paying to get in. Y'all be surprised. It's just y'all poor asses that ain't getting. Right. If you right. had the money, you'll pay to get into. Yeah, them. yeah. It's lots of people who just get into college because, like, with that white man, he said, "I bought a whole ass library." What the fuck? You mean? <laughs> My friends can't come to this. School. <laughs> what the hell? And you see, he got in without a degree. <laughs> Y'all, all those rules are made up. All these rules are made up. All the rules are made up. They are made up. So you get to do what you want to do. And I'm saying I wasn't even that mad at it. Actually, I wouldn't mind seeing more about that white man with all this money who just be slithering through the hood. Right. What did he be doing? Who is more his story? And why he got so much money to give? Ghost was petty, though, for not. Okay. This is a debate. You think Ghost was petty for not giving Tasha shit? No, first, Ghost was petty when he cussed out Tasha like Snoop Dogg cussed out Gail. <laughs> Said, you old half smart chicken head from the hood. <laughs> I would have been fighting in the graveyard. <laughs> you would have been tussling? We have been tussling in that graveyard. Half smart you better hope. You better hope ain't no sights open. <laughs> Why? We would have tussled up in that bitch. <laughs> Stupid. Because we forget the history they have. Mm-hmm. No? Yeah. So, but do you think he was wrong? Should he have left her something? I don't know. I mean, the shady part was he left his mom, her mother, a year's worth of rent. Yeah. You don't think he should have left t- t- anything? That's bullshit. They had that prenup too. They had a prenup. Yes. She's stupid. Then I want to sign shit. They had a prenup. With his drug dealing ass. Yes. I ain't prenup and shit. Oh, Tasha was dumb there. Because that's why he was like, I really because like if if. It was about something like if she cheated, if she cheated, or if, if she left or something like that, she, she wouldn't get shit. You niggas really feeling that way? I I just think more of the history they've had together, how much they've held each other down. Don't get me wrong, I wasn't expecting her to get half or a third of his estate, mm. but I thought he would give her some type of payout, like the house, right? Like you can have the house somewhere to live. And then they gave her nothing. He gave her nothing. I wouldn't want to bury that. I want to unbury that nigga with my bare hands. <laughs> That's why, ladies, don't be getting these prenups. <laughs> now I ain't getting shit. Now unless you make the money, you get you one. Mm-mm-mm. But do you think he was right for that, now? I don't know, baby. This is no. I'm asking your damn opinion. I don't and know. like outside of it, you know, if, if I was a... someone with they was together what at least 10, 15 years. If I was drug lower and I ain't really trust her, has too. Hell yeah. 
You, you don't think nothing. he trusted her? Yeah. You don't. That's why she didn't get shit. Oh my god! I he didn't can't trust imagine. her. I couldn't. Oh, did I miss that? Yes. Why didn't he trust her? Because all he wanted to do was get out the game, and all she kept doing was trying to pull his ass back in. It goes back to that same episode. Nice, he's like, because he's like, oh, you wanted me to be the world's biggest drug lord, and I just want to be something different. You keep telling me about this drug lord shit, and I don't want to do this. I think she like nice things. She, I don't want to do this drug lord shit. But I like Fendi. He, we can still get you Fendi. I think she should have just words mean things. So he's like, so since she want me to still be this drug lord fuck shit, her. and she still want to sell fucking drugs, fuck her. Stop selling drugs. <laughs> That's Stop we, selling drugs. That's what we're going to name this episode. Stop selling drugs. <laughs> Stop selling drugs. Stop selling drugs. I guess. I don't know. I just feel like Tasha's You want to be like, a drug lord? You want to fuck all these men? Cool. She literally fucked one man. Two. Who was the second one? <laughs> that dude she tried to set up. Terry. Actually, three. They was already broken up. Actually, three. Cool. The driver. Yes. Terry. Yeah. And then the other dude. Cute. First of all, she was divorced. What are you talking about? And all, he's like, I just want my kids to have nice things, a better life. Mm-hmm. I'm trying to get out this drug lord shit, and you keep over here selling fucking drugs. That's all you can do is cook books and sell drugs. Yeah, Ramona can be a better woman than you and mentor to these damn kids. <sighs> trying to teach them something different. Oh, Only sh- thing you know how to do is funky, uh, fun- funky uh, accountant. <laughs> Courtney Kim don't like black women. <laughs> She says she loves black women. She's a black woman herself. Yeah. <laughs> An old two bit ass. Always two big. Got- always at the last word because that's her man. <laughs> two bit to the end state true. Mm-hmm. And was like, he was I the realest say- one. He said, "I ain't telling on nobody. I'm just gonna be here. Have a good evening." He's the realest one. I don't know anything else near. Why else did it end? What else was new? That was. Him. I don't know what happened to Yaz. I think her and Grandma are still living together. Yeah. Even grandma, now I want the grandma back story where she was like, You ain't getting no money. What are we supposed to do? Where I said, Girl, do? grandma, you live? got a daycare then. Where are we supposed to live? Tariq better get that degree in two years. <laughs> you better go overseas. How are you going to get a, two year, a four year degree in two years? <laughs> and this nigga had 3.5. <laughs> you better go to um, HP. Never mind. <laughs> he should have. He should have went to HBCU. <laughs> he had a four point <laughs> exactly. And graduated early. Mm-hmm. No shade, but shade. Mm-hmm. He go to a state school. They'll show him. Right. Go to a mid tier state school. His ass fucking the fuck out. You, you thought choke was hard. Nigga. You thought choke was hard. <laughs> go to a mid tier state school that don't give a fuck about you. <laughs> <laughs> he should have went to um, a small HBCU. What's the one with about the clothes? Oh. That's the one he should have went to and been like, I'll donate at some other dollars if I can graduate at four point They give him a degree then. Exactly. Do an honorary degree count? I don't know. Child, that's how see you gotta start thinking like white people. How much money of this trust do I need to give you for it to give me just an honorary degree tomorrow? Right. <laughs> you know, at graduation you prounce their ass on that stage. Right. He get a PhD. <laughs> yeah, you know, it says graduate from four year degree with three point five. Come on. All right. Anything else about power? No, that's it. All right, Niram, you want to touch a little bit on how couples therapy is going for us? So couples therapy is going pretty well. Um, what are we doing now? We're setting up these business meetings for our relationship, as we like to call it. And we have like these 30-minute meetings that we do that we alternate uh, taking time on like who runs the meetings and we talk about like certain things that's going on. So um, it's going into it. I think it's going good. What you think? It is. It's a different concept. Um, we had to do it because Niram and I were bumping heads on when we were having conversations, um, heavy conversations. Like we talk to each other daily, but you know, some stuff where you actually need to get an opinion from folks. So we'll have conversations and passing everything from finances to family planning to like, you know, are we going to save for a house? And you know, out here Silicon Valley is so ridiculous. And if we're not going to buy a house out here, are we going to buy a house in Michigan? Like let our family live in like that type of stuff. Mm-hmm. And like, I feel like we just were missing each other on having these pertinent conversations to the point where it's like, well, I don't want to make the decision on everything. Like this is, we're a unit. And so that's why our therapist recommended that because they said like one person's ready to talk about the other one's not like, and it just, just causes this, I don't know, cycle of what now? Resentment. Like resentment. And like, I don't want to talk about this every time we talk about some bullshit type stuff. So like we have these times set up and the way it's formatted is like, you have to start the first 
part of the meeting, you kind of give each other a compliment. So what's something that, that your partner did, like that really stood out to you? What's something like, you know, you appreciated that they did that week? What is something they did? Remember we're talking about love mapping. Mm-hmm. What's something that they did that you really felt loved that week? And you're supposed to explicitly show that appreciation. Um, and then whoever's leading the meeting then kind of go in with the items to be discussed. Right. And like you go hard for that 30 minutes. But the hard part is when that timer go up for that 30 minutes, you got to let it stop. go. You got to stop. You have to stop until that next following week to go through. So yeah. what it does, it creates space for it. it, it get, yeah. Mm-hmm. It also time box it. It time boxes it too. So whatever action items you have from it, you have to complete those action items to move on. And it help compartmentalize it a little bit more um, too. And it's not necessarily hanging over the head. And say if you're more the person who needs time to process, you know when it's going to be. You mentally can get in the right head space. It just pre- provides that freedom. And other otherwise, if you're the external processor, you can really be thoughtful with your words and what you're going to say. So I, I encourage y'all to do it like, even if you're not married or anything, if you're living together, even if you're not, right? Like if you're in a serious relationship, I think it's important to have like these business meetings once a week or every other week to talk about things. And of course, it'll shift depending on where you are in your life. Right. But it's a time to just get real like solid on like core value things, things for your relationships, things long term, things that's happening. That's it's an equal playing ground. Right. Instead of folks being taken off their square i don't know i've never been told that that's never advice i've been given in relationships who have a business meeting because low-key high-key long-term relationships and marriages is a business yeah and pulse don't tell you that shit like tina say what's love got to do with it that's only a fraction of it and you do have to sometimes run your um relationship and your marriage like a business and you have to have checks and balances and you have to be on the same pages and you have to have like that administrative and operational aspect to your relationship and it shouldn't just be carried by one person exactly mm-hmm. and i think the other thing is that it also takes away like from having these surprise meetings as it's come out of nowhere mm. so like you know one of the things we were talking about is how someone to be ready to like wind down for the day or whatever and then like all of a sudden somebody else want to have like a deep meeting and it's like the fuck i'm about to go to sleep yeah or like or i'm um, about to read or i'm about to watch a book yeah or I'm, about to, I'm about to go to the movies or i'm about to just sleep right like i'm, I'm just trying to chill out and it's like yeah. no we need to have this meeting right now and it's like well fuck like yeah. so uh the fact that we have this dedicated time for like these deep conversations or like tough conversations or whatever yeah. and it's 30 minutes like it, it, it does help out because we, we can be like, all right, it's going to happen this weekend. Yeah. And it also helps from getting around that beating around the bush. You know, sometimes when you be having hard conversations, it's like, well, um, uh, uh, you be like, we got 30 minutes. Listen, mm-hmm. <laughs> listen, I'm looking at our savings. Da, 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 da. Listen, is we having a baby? Listen, are we doing like it's very much like it, it takes out the fluff of it that I think is in place because you have time to kind of give your kudos and your thanks. And right. You give time for your shit sandwich in a sincere way though. Like I think mm-hmm. it builds in a, a shit sandwich in an authentic way to be like, this is something that I really, cause it makes you think about it throughout the week. And then when you get to the nitty gritty, you can be like, listen, this is really what I want to talk about. And this is what I need from you. Mm-hmm. So I encourage y'all to try it. Like the first couple, it feels weird because it feels very businesslike. The way Niram and I do it, we try to do it outside of the house. Mm-hmm. Um, I guess we do it so we don't have to get, we don't get too loud either, honey. Because right. we're in public place. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and then also what we do, we do it without technology. Yeah. So we don't have phones, computers. We literally have a notebook. Um, and that's the notebook that we use to kind of keep track of everything we're doing. Yeah. How you feel about that, man? No, Thank I think you. it's good. I yeah, it's good. Y- y'all should try it. So setting up your business meetings for your relationship or your family too. Like I can see this is a good way something to do with your kids too. I think it goes back to family meetings, but like having real talk with folks during like I think that's a good skill to teach kids. Yeah. Um, when it comes to like money or like just balancing the needs of the household, like I think that would be an amazing skill set to have. Could you imagine if you did this as a kid? No. And you had like meetings every thirty minutes. Every thirty minutes as a family, and your parent asked you like, "Well, how much money have you saved, or how much is in your savings?" <laughs> <laughs> well, fuck you up, right? How much? Well, what are some things you want to do? Well, how is mine. school going? Like, you know, that's the meaning. Like, I've noticed in school you've been doing X, Y, and Z. Why is that? That would have threw me the fuck it off. It would have. What? God damn. That would have threw me off my square. <laughs> So how are we going to move towards that? Yeah. Or if you're thinking about summer, so summer's coming up, what do you think you would like to do? Mm-hmm. Oh, my God. Oh, yeah. Uh, what's it called? Robert's Rule of Order. order. Shit. <laughs> Point of order, mom. <laughs> I mean, you don't got to go that intense, but it's something about having them think thoughtfully about the things they want. Yeah. And, of course, as your parent, you help guide it and do all that. But giving them sense of autonomy is huge because that's what these kids are lacking. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> no autonomy. The kids want to be... Co- I've never... 
another thing in Silicon Valley. I've never worked at a place when people want to be told what to do so bad. And they're so smart. They just want to be told what to do. Because they have no bandwidth or anything else. I'd be like, Jesus, y'all literally just want me to tell you what to do. Yes, tell me what to do. I, I actually hate that. I do too. I said, you literally about to sit here and run down the list and t- like, you don't like, and, and not tell me what to do, not what my outcomes are. Like, I'm the type of person, just tell me what you want to have done and by what date, but you don't have to go through step one through 10 on how to get it done. Like, Mm-mm. that is not, unless it's super technical, mm-hmm. that's not something you need to te- tell me. That's irritating. That's a waste of everyone's time. It is. Why'd you hire me? Because you could have just did it. Actually, my CEO has, uh, has that saying too. Like, I hired all y'all to tell me what to do versus the other way around. Yeah, I agree. Ooh, like, funny. I'm here to like, have a foundation and stuff for us to be a billion dollar like company. Like a philosophy and a vision. But yeah. y'all are here to tell me what the, I need to, to do it. it. Yeah. And what I need to do because maybe I got some blind spots. Yeah. And since I'm the CEO, y'all just follow everything. No. No, no, no. Y'all need to be telling me what I need to be doing. Exactly. And I think that's the hardest part with these kids. They don't understand. Like, I'll tell you what I need you to do, like hit these metrics. But the way in which you do them, I'm mm-hmm. going to give you some autonomy to do it. And then your responsibility is when you find a really swift way to do it. You share with everybody share else. Share up and fucking out. Or if you find out, like, damn, this is taking too long. You still share that up and out. Like, this shit is taking me forever. Is it taking everybody else forever? Like, that's the type of autonomy. But they want to be like, what is my goal? How much do I have to hit it? I'm like, listen. That ain't that ain't life. I also learned out here in Silicon Valley. Like, there, of course, I know they're very metrics driven, but so metrics driven that I've never been in a job where people break down to the percentage what I need to do. Mm. That's not sales or something super technical. Like, I've never been in HR and they be like point zero three. Da, 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 we need you to hit. I'm like, what the fuck is that? Like, we're people. <laughs> like, how do you me- like? You can guesstimate. You can forecast. But I've never seen people who crave that so much like I hear. Maybe that's why they hired me because I'd be unmoved by numbers. Also, I've been in academia and I know how you can cook them books like Tasha. Yeah. In power. It's statistics. So you I've can seen. Change a number, change something else. I've can, seen how them books can easily be cooked and I'm not impressed by certain percentages. You count outliers, don't count, count outliers. outliers. Right. Like, so, like, even when they share some things, I think sometimes they're like, oh, and, da, 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 and we rose by, offer us tests by 84% with 33% less people. What the fuck does that even mean? <laughs> so, is, was you niggas bullshitting? Mm hmm. I also told the babies, and I already talked about this on the podcast, the art of operating between 75 and 85% consistently yeah, we instead of 100% that. anyway. Yep. Shout out Friday. Shout out Friday. So oh, shit. It's Monday. We shout out Monday. Monday. Shout out on a damn Monday. Are we going to do it? Should we do it? Absolutely. We're going to do right. it. All right. Well, shout it. out Monday then. Shout out Monday. <laughs> so as always, to submit your five-star reviews or any questions, comments, or emails, you can do that at blackloveformatters at gmail.com. If you got a voicemail that you want, to be uh to be played, shoot us a voicemail at 508-784-1111. That's 508-784-1111. Uh, we got our first uh, from Apple Podcasts. Uh, it says, what up, doe from T, don't do colonizers. Uh-oh, this is my Detroit, huh? <laughs> yes, and it says, if you're looking for uh, sound life advice and lots of laughs, then this podcast is what you've been waiting for. And here and we have a uh, have very refreshing point of view on life and all things black thank you thank you the next one we got from apple podcast is therapy by Searchman 007 and it says you definitely drop a gem that individuals couples and married couples should seek therapy prior to reaching the point of no return um what does that say a poet with cloud envy uh, pff, hold on what does that say a poet with cloud envy I don't know. <laughs> y'all know it take me a minute and you know i don't have no shame honey i don't got to a certain age where i don't understand something i read it three what times i said let me write it down <laughs> we got we got an email from adriana and it says the hair tyler perry <laughs> she says hey it's been a while but glad to be listening again i don't tell it i don't think tyler perry uh telling us the, the real, real reason <laughs> why he don't care about the wigs in this says? movie a fall from grace probably got double the views because he, uh, because he wanted to put a put on the flaws of Tyler, fall, flaws up on the, the hair. hair. Tyler Perry increasingly uh, his <laughs> Tyler Perry increasing his value by ordering them ten dollar wigs from Wish. from Wish and getting uh, free promotions from audience because of it. <laughs> we do be watching because of the uh, wigs. <laughs> And I say, in black culture, hair is an art. And I say it's an art. And also, there's a variety of price ranges for it. Mm -hmm. So I get what Tyler Perry's saying. He's fronting all this, so he had to cut the bills. But I think you can still go to, even if you go to the schools, 
So even if you go to Detroit, Chicago, St. Louis, Carolinas, if you go to one of them black beauty schools, Nero, you're going to get better outcome. But the thing is, this, Nero, you could just be like, I'm going to pay for y'all tuition. And all y'all do is people hair on my. But the thing skirt. is, maybe he's doing it on purpose because he knows people he's gonna trolling talk about us. It. Yes. That's not of God. He's trolling us. That's not of God. Because he knows that if he trolls us <laughs> and everybody get all up in arms, everybody's going to talk about it. Yes. And even though it's going to get a two-star review, everybody's talking about it and watching it anyway, hate watching it, so everybody else can see Because that's what on. it is. Like I told y'all, I can forgive the empty glasses of He's water. trolling us. I can forgive all that, but that hair shit, I do get <laughs> upset about that. I do. Honestly, that's what is me. <laughs> one of the most things that pisses me off from Tyler Perry is bad hair and he'll have enough women writers. Mm. If he could get those two things together, I'd be cool because honestly i don't i don't hate a bad movie like i used to watch lifetime every sunday so a bad over dramatic movie that don't bother me i know it bothers y'all but that don't bother me <laughs> is it my turn yeah um, this one's from Red Baron. The subject is Black History Month. The message. First, shout out to all the black folks um, of the dysphoria on this occasion. I would like to give an esteemed shout out to Kobe Bryant on this month. There has been a lot going on, a lot that has transpired, and a lot of growth. I can't say anything more that really hasn't been said about Kobe, but I will say this. Kobe was a black man of rare, rare growth. Each um, each an opportunity um, the each and every opportunity that came his way to grow, he did. He wrote a book. He made a film. He put money back towards causes, causes grew his way of thinking. Also, um, that um, of his case where he was found not guilty of great um, rape. Now, let me say this. We can and should take the totality of a person's life objectively. We can do that and should do that. And Kobe is a black man of which more black men should aspire to and um uh, and and what I mean by that is growth. Even when he called a refugee um, the F word, he learned that um, that was not the way to go and dedicated um, dedicated to causes. Kobe Bryant empowered people, even those who have been survivors of rape, with how he's looked at the whole situation of his overall actions, no matter how others may have interpreted them. So I am at a loss because a very rare black man um that a young and that that a young one too had so much more to teach the black community and he's gone too soon his daughter g um was really his legacy and she really did have that i feel that the woman in his life truly made him better and to aspire to be better so i say that mr kobe Bryant was a very rare black man it's because um he was if we take the time to meditate over his life there are many pleasant stories about him and plus a black man that's made other straight black men break down in tears where they were weeping and openly mourning that should tell you um that black man was something happy black history Three month red baron thank you it was so nice mm-hmm. go ahead uh so we got one from woke ass tam what's up tam uh she said <laughs> the subject is i'm looking how Niram <laughs> don't wrote the woke ass i'm like wait a minute that ain't the email address Niram gonna give you a whole new email address <laughs> uh the 411 on oh, Brene Brene Brene. brown i'm trying i still ain't did it <laughs> i got to the end of 2020 <laughs> to read one book and watch her Netflix. Maybe I'll watch it um, Monday. Happy New Year and congratulations on reaching 300 episodes from your Cali cousins, Woke Ass Tam and Nessie. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm writing to give Naomi more information regarding <laughs> Brene Brown and her name. <laughs> having read Brene, uh, having read yeah. Brown's book, uh, Brave in the Wild, and she explains her upbringing. Oh, she lived in New Orleans. Uh, living in New Orleans before moving to Texas, and that her full name was Cassandra. Oh, Cassandra. Brene Brown. <laughs> That's a black name. Growing up in 1969, people saw her name and assumed she was black. That's a black name. Which led her to begin, uh, which led her to being excluded from white party, white friends parties. Damn, Once her ma- damn, just off the name, white people are colonizers <laughs> or something else. Colonizers are something else. Y'all cannot tell me colonizers are something else. Damn. How do I have that more stick to itness? <laughs> you said your name hint at nigga. Right. You not coming. It ain't even got a U in it. What you mean? <laughs> you know how Cassandra. Yeah. It ain't Cassandra. It ain't Cassandra. You know, yeah. they usually put a it's, it's usually put a, a U after that A. Yeah, Cass be Sandra. Cassandra. Yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> Uh, once her mom realized what was going on, she decided to have Cassandra go by her middle name, which is Brene, with her apostle. Like, that's less black. 
<laughs> Her family was on slaves. <laughs> they did. It's been a long time since we uh, contacted y'all, but we know uh, how life is. Busy, busy, busy. At any rate, uh, we're back and happy that you are still releasing new podcast episodes. Mm-hmm. Nessie thoroughly enjoyed your recap of your Jamaica <laughs> trip, and Nero, you know, you know, you were wrong for eating, eating fish, fish on, the on the plane. It's like it's not even snakes on the plane. Look at these fucking fishes <laughs> off the plane. <laughs> I am seeing Nyambi all the way and would have broke up with you via text message too. It really challenged my loyalty to him. And I'm very loyal. I proud myself on the loyalty. Loyalty to a detriment. I am loyal to people to a detriment. And that is when the shadow kicked in. Because I had to stand there with my head tall. Like as Tasha. That, as I ate that fish. I had to stand there with my head tall. Like it ain't bothering me. We almost didn't have nobody sitting next to That's the plan I was going it for. Almost then. You could tell the person was like, I guess it's me. <laughs> you want a piece of fish? <laughs> I don't think I've eaten fish since. <laughs> I don't think I've eaten no fish since November. I don't think I've had any fish, man. That's how much you fucked me up. I don't think I've had any fish. I don't know what the fuck is wrong with y'all. Like, it's just food. Like, no, get over not. the smell. It's just fish. No, it's not. Fried catfish on a plane. <laughs> so what? <laughs> Shit. It's so bad. It's that is a norm. Listen here, Donald Trump. Look, y'all you are act not like adjusting the norm. y'all act like y'all ain't never smelled worse on a goddamn plane, other than fried the, the wonders of a beautiful smell of fried catfish. Y'all know y'all wanted some too. <laughs> All I can think of is a kid. What's that smell? I'm like, oh, I'm so embarrassed. <laughs> We're excited about <laughs> Naomi taking a bigger role in the podcast, and look forward to a live show whenever you have it. Uh, wishing you a wonderful and prosperous 2020. I hope to see you both soon. Uh, write you later. Woke ass Tam and Nessie. Perfect, perfect. Um, the next one we have is from, they said we can say their name? Yeah. Um, Leticia. Leticia? I'm saying Leticia. But you see, know, like, what? We said she, uh. Leticia, because the I. Oh, no, that's still Leticia. Tisha? Okay. Yeah. Let's do it from Tisha. The subject is, I want a B, <laughs> she want to be, okay. Uh, I want a BET award. She yelling it. <laughs> the message says what up bros it's cuz it's T just checking in since Neom is wondering if anybody's still listening <laughs> 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 sorry in advance for the long email it says I don't watch colonizer wars at all only the BET and the Soul Train Awards when Neom said the awards were rooted in she's screaming whiteness clap 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 that was a word these are the little emojis y'all <laughs> Dude, I need to write emails like this. <laughs> Y'all should do a list of nominees for the people you think deserve their flowers in your favorite categories. That would be so much joy. We should. We should do the Black Love Matters Award and then like send it to them on Twitter and stuff. <laughs> um, Tyler Perry does does have bad writing. <laughs> I've never admit that in front of whites, but he could have named it Tyler Berry, Perry bad writing skills and the colonizers still could never tell me it was bad writing i agree i also don't talk bad about um tyler Perry in front of white people were you in the car or was it nia when we were in an uber going somewhere and somehow we got into maybe you weren't there maybe we we're in new york and we went to a broadway play and somebody asked us what our favorite playwrights were then you know nia's having this conversation and listening you know i've checked out and the man was like well what's your favorite playwright you know i said tyler perry <laughs> Were you there or was no, it just me? There. And Nia almost hit the ground when I said my favorite playwright was Tyler Perry. <laughs> <laughs> and the right man was like, I haven't heard of him. I said, like, oh, yes, he's extraordinary. Duh, duh, duh. You should look at the Tyler Perry. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. So I changed somebody's life that day. Um, Nayambi was right. We need Jonathan to referee this presidential election. He would literally have Bernie and Lizzie fighting in the streets over the last chocolate favor in short booty itch then dropped from the race he's gonna have to give his own tutorial how to say his name to the press before i can put some respect on his name uh all republicans against don cheeto please come to the altar and give us your testimony we still might not vote for you but we'd like to do a background check on that ass um <laughs> and another thing that heifer she put in a cow uh, from Hawaii needs to drop the race. The only vote she getting is president, not president. Yeah, when she voted president, I was mad. Um, all this black self love and awareness y'all bringing in twenty twenty is magical. Thank you, Asian woman, um, for the free homework. However, I am triggered. I am triggered by accepting your partner's influence, being slick the way you see and being obedient. But I have realized my rigidness in my relationship since. <laughs> I told you, our Asian. <laughs> Yeah, I was like, what? I said, okay. I, I am obedient. 
Watch your words, sis. Nyambi said her faith uh, was not lost. Faith never uh, said her faith was not lost. Her faith never left. You have to lose something in order to find it. Niram, um, want Niram, we want an app too. I'll moderate on Tuesdays and Saturdays. <laughs> I would gladly put my heel on the nets and boots of na- and bots of naysayers. <laughs> That's the hard thing about the app, right? Because you know, when we create an app, I want it to be a safe place. I don't have time for the bullshit, and I want to be on it. I don't want no bots. No haters thriving. I want them to be cut off so quick that the people don't even feel it. Because, you know, you come to our space for a safe space. Um, anywho, I have a pimp hole relationship with my job. <laughs> Bring on the script for Black Holidays, please. The cubicle warriors need it. It's hard not to say nigga around white friends, especially to mimosas in. <laughs> I told you, I told you not when it was really hard not to say that. I'm censored around white people subconsciously. They can get this for the culture attitude in the uh, attire, though. Thanks, Target. Uh, the way Naomi described the crab boil. Now, you know I love me some black business, but let the Asians cater live show with that crab boil <laughs> script. <laughs> I, got this sh- I got a show for y'all to watch on Hulu. It's called The Feed. It's science fiction, but I really think y'all will love y'all commentary on it. Go near them out there making bit travel moves. Is you jet led? I am. Um, last thing, y'all watch. What is this, Noisy? Uh-huh. Uh, uh, the therapist. The therapist Joe on YouTube? Uh-uh. Joe Button is on it. I've. You uh-huh. seen that episode with Joe Biden? You remember the therapist who used to come on? Uh, oh, the Vice? one who's like Namaste. Yeah, yeah. I, th- I need to go back Sag-Nak-Sing. and watch it. Yeah, I can't say his name. Uh, I'm not even going to give it away. Just watch it. Let me know how you feel. Now, let me go get this five star review uh, from my mom's phone. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> See you later. <laughs> she said that you have to wait that the crab boil near him. We had a crab boil at the live show. It puts everyone to shame. I've never had a- the Asians take the crab boil. They do. I don't care what anyone. The Asians take the crab bulls. The um, my Latino uncles take moving. Mm-hmm. Okay, <laughs> can't nobody else move me to my Latino uncles. Okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, the next one is from Toy. It says, "Hey, it's Toy. Uh, hope y'all are enjoying the new year." Uh, when I was listening to episode three hundred three, I started crying when Naomi said Tariq gonna go, gonna grow up to become a man. <laughs> Talks about what he lost at Christmas every year. <laughs> I don't even watch Power, but all y'all recaps are hilarious. <laughs> Hope Nero have a safe trip to Germany. <laughs> that shit wasn't funny. It was. You know Tyree gonna be talking about it. <laughs> um, this is from Juliana. It says, I don't know. I, I know that mess y'all. Uh, what do you say? I don't know that, that mess, mess y'all, y'all listening to. My kids have to listen to Frankie Beverly and Maze with me. <laughs> <laughs> also, those seafood roaches are delicious. <laughs> 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 have a great time in Germany, room. I filled up my old Gmail and I'm not paying for no more space. So this is my new email. You know you can delete Juliana the stuff. Delete it. <laughs> you know you can delete stuff, Juliana. <laughs> if you delete the Juliana, old messages, we we'll help you. <laughs> I'm just starting to do <laughs> You can delete stuff, Juliana. <laughs> she said, I'm moving on with my I'm, fucking life. I'm starting a new <laughs> email address. Hell, I think I might need one too. I new might like email. Be with Juliana. <laughs> new email who this? New email who this? Um, we got one from Sky and it says, Love Maps and Shuby. He said, Hey, y'all, it's, it's Sky again. I told y'all that I was going to be a regular now and I meant it. So I am very into the therapy, and I don't believe therapy is just for uh, people who are depressed Mm-mm. and not feeling lost. No, it's for everybody. Therapy is for every step in life, and sometimes the tool that helps you get to the next step in life. Uh, I re- I was introduced to therapy by my white coworker. It's amazing and refreshing on uh, how open mm-hmm. they are about therapy, mental health, in comparison to the black community. Yeah, I agree. We need to talk about it more. I know. One of my white co-workers, uh, co-workers was like, I'm sad. And I was like, what you sad for? She's like, my- <laughs> Damn, Nero. Why and do you I'm, say it like that? No, I said, what would you say for? She's oh. like, my, my therapist yoga teacher quit. Like, she's retiring. Her yoga I said, what? Teacher. Damn, they do it all? I said, what you mean? She's like, she's a therapist and a yoga teacher. And it's like, my insurance pay for both. Oh, and hey. I was like, since it's therapy and yoga, we just need to be doing yoga and therapy together. That's kind of lit. I said, the fuck? And when she retired? Yeah. Because I was like, well, shit. I Can I some, go? I want some therapy <laughs> yoga. Trying to line up. Yeah. All of our ass trying to get some therapy yoga. Everybody I can get needs flexibility to get therapy. physically and mentally. I huh. hope my parents listen. I'm trying to get them in therapy too. And my dad's going to be the hardest one. I think I got my mom convinced. Yeah. Because I, I, it's a form. Because I do think they almost think you have to have something wrong to go to therapy. Mm-hmm. But it's more, it's self care. It's like yeah. a mental. You know how you go to the doctor every year for a physical? It could be precautionary. Like it does not always have to be. 
I think just nine times out of ten people, because it's like it's not like when you go to the altar to the Lord, you're like, mm-hmm. Lord, this is all I got. I, I, <laughs> help me. Right. I think people get to that point because they tried everything. But you can be thriving in life mm-hmm. and you could talk about whatever you want to talk and you can take the thriving to the next level. Right. Because right? that's my goal. I'm trying I'm trying to stay in therapy so I get to thriving so I can then be really glowing to the next level. Right. And still have a therapist. Come on. And just talk about a lot of other good shit. Yeah. And because you can use therapists for whatever you want to. You can start plotting out your shit. So once you get past anxiety, depression, hurt, shame and defeat. Right. Right. Then you can start plotting out other shit in your life. Right. My right? Th- like my can... therapist helped me create a schedule. That's what I'm saying. You can be like, I'm unorganized. Can you help me with that? <laughs> like then they that's their job as a therapist to help you process through right. that shit. So it's just for life shit. So I'm trying to get to that point where I can just do life shit, honey. Exactly. So like if it's nothing drastic going on, you can really go and talk about everything you want. Like even my parents, I'm like, y'all about to retire. Y'all should be talking to a therapist about that. Like right. bringing you joy. Like what does this next phase in your life gonna look like and what is this life shift gonna be for right. me? Like, I think that requires therapy. Hell, women who going through menopause. Right. What the, my whole fucking body, I'm going through puberty again? Like, what the fuck is happening? <laughs> like, you know, it'd be nice to have somebody to talk to. hmm And to unpack and problem solve with you compared to your, what Snoop Dogg calls your old funky ass family. <laughs> I'm going to start telling everybody old funky ass. All what? right. Go on, sorry. She goes on to say, I, I love building, I love maps. Really understanding your partner world is so important and it has the level of complexity to it. It, because people are constantly growing and evolving. My boyfriend and I are starting to uh, started doing this last night over nice. drinks. Ooh, ooh, even better. Um, we started the question with who are your two best friends and why. Mm. Although we had an idea, it was great to hear it again because yeah. it really stood out in the description of yep. where our core values are. True. We shift questions to uh, that wasn't on the list, but it came up in personal therapy. Uh, what's your partner's therapeutic mm-hmm. outlook? And how can I better understand and respect your partner therapeutic outlook? Woo, honey, this one. That is. My therapeutic outlook are mainly not creative, although oftentimes uh, yeah. I find myself writing poetry. That's really nice. I release by being on social media and extrovert. My partner's outlet is all creative mm. and introvert. Oh, yeah, and that can be hard, right? Mm. So if y'all are trying to outlet together, if you're not on the same page or you weren't aware of this, like the other person can take this for not being invested in them or yeah. not appreciating them or being standoffish. So that's really good to have clarity on that. That's saved at least 10 arguments. Exactly. So there is some form of, for lack of better words, disconnect. Yeah. <laughs> um, while having different outlets is fine. I believe you need to both understand and respect their form of therapeutic relief. However, what does seem, what, what does that really look like with Niram being more creative uh, on the, being more on the creative side, I would love to hear you guys speak about what that looks like for you. Mm-hmm. Uh, lastly, the motherfucking circle. All I can say is Shuby is the man. The way Shuby be holding down joy, I start. You started to rethink my social media friends. Like shoot, like shit. Shuby said, uh, "I can't look in the mirror if I send him home." Like honey, he can't even face this man. Uh, face himself if he's he the full, just loyal. That's the type of times I need. I need a Shuby too. Come on. Enjoy the long weekend. Have a blessed weekend. Now, that's a good one. You want to talk about that um, later in this week? Yeah, we can of do how that. we balance like therapy. Because it is. I think, honestly, that's a lot of Niram and I arguments mm-hmm. as of lately. Yeah. Because we do have different ways of processing. And as y'all can tell, I'm an external processor. And as it comes in my head, I need to immediately get it out. Mm-hmm. Um, and Niram wants to think about it. And what triggers me when Niram be like, I need a minute. Or your Niram be like, can we talk about this later? And I'm like, nigga, what? I am on fire now. Like, what do you mean talk about it later? Exactly. Talk about it later. And how do you balance that? Yeah, mm-hmm. we can say that for Thursday or Friday, whenever the next one comes out. <laughs> this, later this week. Should we just do a surprise episode? Y'all don't never know, honey. <laughs> We breaking all the rules. Up. Exactly. Um, a podcast. The- we were, hey, we was only on Only thing it. guaranteed is Monday. We was on it for like the first two years. Uh, you know, Monday guaranteed, and then you can get one anywhere between Tuesday and Saturday. <laughs> it depends on when we free. <laughs> <laughs> like, hey, now you want to do a podcast now? Like, fuck it. Just yeah, two, I'm free. Two a week, one Monday, and we don't know the other Look, day. I'm free. <laughs> <laughs> um, our next one is from Faith. Um, the subject is doing that good work. The message says, hey, Nyambi and Nero. 
Um, please forgive me if I misspelled your names. I searched all over the internet and couldn't find the correct spelling. <laughs> no, you're good. That's perfect. Um, I hope 2020 is off to a great start for you. I've been enjoying your podcast for the last year. Um, and talk to your talk. What does that say? Did I do that right? Right. Yeah, yeah. And your talks tickle me so much. Great energy and always something thought provoking for me to digest. Now, based on your last podcast about building love match, which I really like, it sounds like you're positioning yourselves nicely for a new year. So. <laughs> It says the man I've chosen to love for the past seven years and I um, are reading the seven principles for making marriage work by John Gottman. And we love it. We got to actually get that book. Mm -hmm. Um, We we aren't married. Personal backstory. Oh, am I supposed to read this? Oh, okay. Has us paralyzed with the idea of marriage. Cool. Not for everybody. And we decided to be intentional about exploring the possibility of being married to one another. We read a chapter. We read a chapter a week and make a date of discussing it over coffee, drinks, or a meal outside of our home. The idea of the books aren't necessarily groundbreaking, but they are eye-opening. The magic happens when you both read it separately and come together to discuss it. I peek over to see what he's highlighted in in um in delight in how alike our notions are. We are on the ninth chapter, and what we've learned about each other and our past love affairs have been powerful. It's um all informs how we deal with one another in the present. Um, and that's really half the battle. We are clear on what um we are well suited for, um, marriage, and have a f- um, firm foundation based on the feedback following the exercises. Investigating investing in couples therapy is a real gift, and the possibilities are endless. When you can find some time to dig into this book and watch. Um, your marriage blossom even further. I'm sure you will learn more about each other and be surprised, pleasantly surprised, and with the results. Why? Because like beautiful people always remind us, love is ever evolving. Um, all the good things, good people. Oh, and thanks. Oh, thank you for happy Father's Day. Thank you, Sora. Shout out to you. Oh, thank you. We haven't unpacked that book. I should need to buy it off Amazon. Yeah, we haven't bought it. Saying, I need to buy it. Actually, that's a good idea to buy. Usually, we just buy one book. We do need to buy two. You gonna read it now? Yeah, I read it. Or you gonna see if it's on Audible? I'll see if it's on Audible. Oh. <laughs> So do I need to buy one book then? Just buy one book and I And buy then you'll do Audible. Audible. Yeah. Books like that I have to read. Mm-hmm. Like I can listen to fiction books. It's hard for me to listen to nonfiction books. Mm-hmm. It's really weird. I think it's how my brain processes. All right, Neil, go ahead. Um I don't even know how to say it. Is this Edas? Adidas? Adidas? Adidas. 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 Uh, still in hot mess. Message says, before I start this email, I must say this is a lengthy read and honestly would like assistance on both on both issues from you and the Black Love Matters <laughs> All right, y'all, listen me. up. Okay, we gonna, oh, we got our whole episodes for the next week. We get to think how we are process and we can answer this question. Should we uh, save this now? Sure. I don't yeah, know. let's save this. All right. Okay, we're, oh, but we should read it so folks can have feedback too. Hello, this is uh, Edis. I don't, you come, on, come on, come on, come on. Functional, what I'm trying to say. Fanatic. E-D-A-S. All right, you know who you are. Yeah, I am the one who asked for advice for moving uh, to Boston, AKA, AKA White, White Ass New England. Yeah, that name um, familiar. well, my podcast family, I must say, I hate it here, <laughs> and I'm actually looking you. for other positions in we, other states. We told you, <laughs> you ain't listening. It's the reason why we not in White Ass New England no more. <laughs> The level of passive aggressive uh, racism is out of control here. I started my federal position uh, August 5th, and by August 14th, I was applying for new positions. <laughs> I have a white supervisor that has severe distaste for black women, uh, especially those with any type of degree associated uh, with them. Yeah, uh, She has made several black women qu- quit, cry, and break down physically. Oh, hell no. One woman is wearing a heart machine <laughs> for palpitations. Caused by this woman. What? what the hell is Why y'all? are you is still this there? The it's CIA. Why are you still there? Get the fuck out, sis. Um, the issue I have with her is is that her words is considered far greater than mine. Uh-huh. Yeah. If I say something to my black ass supervisor about her white ass behavior, yeah, she, she brushes it off. Huh. I'm in a union, but they are known to not help, help yeah, new they employees. Best in new no. Um, I would say that being in this environment took a toll on my mental and physical health, yep. and I was diagnosed with anxiety, and here. being here is a trigger. I mean, it sense. truly is. Yeah. Second issue is with my partner. Oh, Let's sure. preface my question and issue by saying we haven't seen each other besides FaceTime in two years and haven't had sex either. Uh, mm, the last yeah. the last check-in with you guys, I broke up with her and decided to move on, which okay. she did pull me back in with promises to do better. Damn, Damn. you fell for the trap. You fell Show for the trap. Proof. She, like actions. they say on Love and Hip Hop. <laughs> After a year not seeing each other, she decided to 
come visit and what she decided to come, to visit, come, vi- from Seattle. come visit from Seattle. Unfortunately for me, the visit was not what I thought it would be. I outwardly show her how much I miss her by kissing and holding her hand. She mm-hmm. was uh, uncomfortable with my PDA uh, and immediately turned off. Mm-mm. She went into saying that she loves me but was not attracted to my mental state. Oh, shit. Not Marilyn Monroe. If you don't love me at my worst, you don't deserve me at my best. Our communication was diminished, and she couldn't, uh, can't be intimate with me in this state. She did in our conversation with her mentioning that she loves me but still wants uh, wants to make it work. Yes, Naomi, she told you told me to break <laughs> up with her. <laughs> but how do you make it work with someone you've been with for years? You just got to go somewhere else? Leave. Leave. Yeah. Uh, I know you recently said that you and uh, knew, you and Niram are going through therapy, but that's not possible for this no, besides breaking break up. up. Side oh. eye now. I'm oh. What can I do? <laughs> Did I just say break up? Break up. Okay, this is good that I can marinate a few days. You already know my answer. Because your worst, sis. Mm-hmm. Uh, P.S. I'm a member of uh, Sig- oh, Sigma Gamma Rose Sorority hey, Incorporated. Uh, incorporated. Incorporated. Uh, and I must say shenanigans. I must deny as high mass. It I is would, shenanigans. I, I don't care what anyone says. I love my AKA and I love my divide, but it's shenanigans. Yeah. <laughs> I would gladly say that I am too... I am, I am too okay with oh, being a general, general member. Yeah, many, many name. years ago, I've agreed uh, with the new, uh, with the new stute, noops the distaste of boozy antics, but the outlandish <laughs> foolery that has been going on. Look, <laughs> look on the Greek shenanigans <laughs> IG page with the D nine, and I would just refuse to say exactly. That's <laughs> it. So we're telling our biggest issue is boozy shimmy, <laughs> or our biggest issue is um, uh, what's his name. Boosie wearing a K.A. side shirt. <laughs> that is not our biggest issue. That is not the biggest fish to fry. D9, you should just let that go. Mm-hmm. Especially y'all use his song as y'all, um, what's it called? Yeah. Not the anthem. What I was going to say, the hymn. <laughs> <laughs> I thought the K.A. side hymn was. Boosie, wipe, wipe me, me down. down. <laughs> that was the hymn. When they be getting married and dying. Shoulders, pants, <laughs> knees, chest. I thought that was their hymn. Shoulders, hands, knees, chest. And all the cappers were at me. <laughs> at me. This me is down. This is a K who ain't scared. I've been in the game over a decade. I ain't scared of nothing what y'all got to say. B-O-O-S-I-E. All you do not at me. I don't give a damn. It's the truth. B-A-D-A-Z-Z. That's me. That's me. Then they do the shimmy. <laughs> shimmy, shimmy, shimmy. I was sis. Like, I thought we was, we got bigger fish to fry in D9 than worry about. I, that should have just been, it should have eased on by. Mm-hmm. Like Betty Wright say, just let it ease on by. Just let them have that. Yeah. <laughs> Last P.S. The attack on black women has, has been ridiculous from verbal attacks on Lizzo, Tiana Taylor, yeah, Blue too Ivy much. Car- too Carter, much. Uh, Megan Marco, Ari Lennox is disheartening. It's too much. The presence of social media has made it harder for beautiful, darker women yep. uh, to You're resist right. without current society, within our current society. Uh, we know that stand up harsh criticisms has been done to black women in the past, uh, i.e., Lil Kim changing her physical appearance. <laughs> I ain't gonna do it. Yeah. The constant dragging a black woman gives this notion that the world interact with us uh, and we do not deserve to be respect yeah. of the light skin and white counterparts. Black women deserve to be respect and love, but is that possible with our constant uh, consistently face of the jokes, yeah. brunt of harsh jokes and negativity? Thank you, Black Love Matters family, and Happy New Year. Ooh, that's deep. What it you got now? Tr- uh, Ashe? <laughs> 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 uh, everything sis sending that email is breaking up with other sis <laughs> break up with that bitch <laughs> like, as I talk about like, <laughs> like, we talk about hard treatment of black <laughs> that person that transition now I gotta up the um ante break up <laughs> break. But no, somebody new we'll unpack uh, Monday we'll unpack more and like really get some solutions if you want to try to work but always know my first step is, at this point is to break up right you have way too much to give you can tell your thoughtfulness the way you write I know that's right Mabel pissed too honey like nah you holding back your blessing honey who you supposed to be with right. but yeah why does New England is rough and it's not like you work for a government FBI or federal but I know they funny honey because sure they don't is. lead a job so they've been there since 1943 they don't care either <laughs> 
<laughs> Don't you spit on my laptop. They do not care <laughs> at all, sis. Did you get com- connected to the community? I mean, even that black community a little tough, though. It right. took me a minute to break into the New England black community. Yeah. Like, once I did, they were cool, but they were a hard crowd to break into. It is. Once you do it, they cool, but it's hard, though. Yeah, once you get into it, they can you can barely get rid of their ass. Yeah, yeah, they own you, like, white on rice, but it's hard to break into it compared to, like, Michigan or even California where it's a lot more like, oh, okay, yeah, come just, just chill, but New England, child. It's like you getting initiated all over again. Right. All right, we got some phone calls. We got some voicemails. All right, let's listen. You got in there. Yeah, baby, yeah. Is it playing? My bad, Naomi. I, I swear I thought I called y'all last uh-huh. week, but I can't really think about it. Um, yeah, I was just calling to say that I was really disappointed in my last week. Um, I had some issues that I didn't like about myself, and I was like, okay, I'm going to change it. Mm-hmm. 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 I know y'all like, who the hell is calling me at this time of night? <laughs> Naram, I know you somewhere Sweet. in, uh, where you, where you went? Germany? Yeah. <laughs> in Germany! <laughs> it's um, I'm just, y'all are in thought. I don't know why. At this hour, I just finished cleaning my kitchen. Y'all are in thought, and I hope that you're having a productive, mysterious, uh, sign the non disclosure ass week. <laughs> Nyambi, I hope you're enjoying some self care time. Um, taking the doggy with you to work, you know, leaving the doggy home. Hope doggy didn't get in no shit, you know what I'm saying? Um, hope you're relaxing, catching up on shows, you know, eating well. And I don't know if y'all doing, um, an episode tomorrow, tomorrow's Friday. A bitch is calling out of work because when I tell you about my knees, my knees <laughs> are showing their asses, okay? I'm getting old, y'all, and if my husband don't come soon, he ain't gonna get no knee specials, okay? <laughs> but, um, yeah, put the pillow down. So, um, I'm calling out of work tomorrow, and unfortunately, I'm gonna have my children with me, yeah. because if I don't get out of bed, they're not going to school. But it's cool, though. But I hope you guys have a good Friday, and I hope you get home safe, Miriam, and I hope you get home safe, Nyambi, and, um, the doggy and all that, all that shit. Uh, I'm about to have my nightly cup of tea. Yep. And I'm going to take my ass to bed. Good night. Good night. She said, my knees. You know, you got to wash them knees because I was working out with my um, trainer. And she was like, I said, that's enough lunges like or squats. I said, wait a fucking minute. I feel like my knees was popping and shit. I said, I need to take some MTC oil. What's the medicine we get Mabel for her joints? Mm-hmm. What's it called? What's the food you're supposed to eat? The uh, magnesium? Cod- the- conjuring in or something like oh, that. Oh, shit. Mm-hmm. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Mabel, don't you think about barking. She heard a dog outside. Oh. Mm-hmm. Let's see. We got another one from Shane. Okay. Aaron and Nyambi, welcome back. Listen, when I tell you I am dying to get to the bottom of Nyambi talking about what is going on. And they're talking about talented creators of mine. No, it's not. She's like, it's getting paper in the eight of roach. When I tell you. Yeah, it's, it's 
As I, as I keep getting older, like I need clear definitions on what I say it's a vibration. to make sure I understand. When I was younger, I might be like, oh, okay, I think I understand the vibe. At this age, what do y'all mean? It's vibrations. Okay, the vibrations. I guess I understand vibrations. So I don't know. Get your life together. I'm trying. What's this one? Shan. Oh. Nero. <laughs> I know you did not just say. <laughs> when that artist was uh releases one song is called a Lucy. That'll call a cigarette. A cigarette. <laughs> a cigarette you get from a mama's pocket store <laughs> or their bodega because you don't want to buy a whole pack of nasty ass cigarettes. That's what that is. But a single EP is usually called that artist's EP. Mm, no, e- that is what it's called. No, What's EP is like two to three. <laughs> A single was called a Lisa a Lucy. <laughs> I don't know, man. That do feel hood rich. Um, it's called a know. Lucy. That was funny to me. Y'all are y'all are with the shit this morning. <laughs> that's how they'll be talking to me. It's called a Lucy. Like, but I'm like, what does that mean? He's like, that's a Lucy. And sometimes I'd be believing him, but then he had me in these streets talking crazy. <laughs> it's called a Lucy. And now when somebody like that, someone got, I'm like, so um, Lady Gaga got new Lucy out. <laughs> like, what? It doesn't even make sense. It do. <laughs> Don't know what the hell y'all talking about. Uh-uh. Talking about an EP. Ain't no damn EP. Hey, Nairman Nyambi. This is Red Baron, and I am calling to let you know Happy Black History Month. It's like, it's I'm not sure when you'll get this <laughs> or when you'll. We'll get a chance to review over it, but, you know, I just wanted to let you know that and what you guys do continues to be important along with all of the many listeners. So, happy Black History Month, and I hope that it is starting out better, especially with the last of Kobe, Gia, and so many others last month. Be safe. Take care. Have a great day. Thank you. I feel like Red Baron always grounds us. You know, like, da, 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 da. and I'm like, okay, I gotta listen to Red Baron. Let me bring it down. Let me bring it down. Thank you. Who's this one from there? Uh, I don't know. I just know these phone numbers, brother. Oh, you just be hitting play. Yeah. See, I be screening. I listen to them, but then I'm oh. like, oh, that's the Black Love Matters. You oh. know. Hi, my name is Kawana, and I am calling from Louisiana. Hey. Calling in response to episode 303, I just listened to mm-hmm. two points. Number one, mm-hmm. do not think that the California seafood is anything comparable to Louisiana seafood. <laughs> I knew she was I'm calling sorry. for that. I've been there, didn't enjoy it. <laughs> Nothing else was great, though. And also, I was your power nervous. recap. When you said Tariq was going to be... <laughs> A grown man crying over a Sega, I damn near wrecked my car. The funniest shit, because I have been following you guys for a minute now, and I got the joke. Keep doing great things, guys. Love it, love it, love it. Again, do not compare California people to anything that you can get in Louisiana. Or the South, New Orleans, that's commercial. Please come to the hood, Baton Rouge. Thank you. Have a great day, guys. I am so surprised. That's the first. I was waiting for folks from um, New England. I didn't think they was going to tear me up that much. I honestly was waiting for somebody from New Orleans or I was waiting for somebody from DMV to come tear me up mm-hmm. and come, like, tell me off about Obey. Because I know your niggas got Obey in your spirits. Oh, my God. These niggas in Obey. Um, but no one from DMV called. But I was like, New Orleans. I knew New Orleans was going to call. Cause they don't play about their food, and you know New Orleans got food, honey. You know I throw down every time I go. But them Asians do it. Did you go to the Asian spot? Don't go to the um chain. 
you got to go to the Asian spot. You got to go to like when grandma and pop pop in the background and they all their ingredients Asian. <laughs> like even the salt and pepper. I said, y'all oh need to buy God. y'all salt and pepper from America. No. <laughs> I knew I knew New Orleans was going to tear me up. It surprised me it took this long. <laughs> all right. That's our last one. Okay. Hey, Sips Broadcast. My name is Anne Niram. It's Cindy, Kinky Cross Culture on IG. I'm calling from Dallas, but I'm from New Orleans. Oh, shit. I'm not like the crazy Texas people. Just kidding. <laughs> Happy MLK, family. I know these are the holidays that we celebrate. We hold these sacred. So I just wanted to wish you guys a happy MLK. Me and my daughter, Macy, got to do the parade earlier, oh, listen nice. to some speeches on title. Shout out to Jay mm-hmm. for always doing a speech playlist for all our important people on their holidays and celebrating us like right. that. Mm-hmm. I just wanted to say hi, finally, on the actual voicemail, let you know that we love you guys. Glad that we're not losing you. I was a little worried. <laughs> and um, we appreciate what you have to offer. I want you guys to have safe travels, sending love and light on all of your awesome adventures. And looking forward to you guys on a new schedule. Bye. All righty. Thank you. She's right. I forgot to get that shout out. I forgot they'd be doing that on title. I don't have title anymore, but when I did have title, Jay Z does a really good job. I'm like, I, like, like Jay Z, the only like one working Jay-Z there. Do it, like, he the only one working. I would hope it's a part of his vision or his team. So, title does a really good job of not only curating, like, good, like, honestly, I think Spotify is unmatched with the playlist. But mm-hmm. when it comes to curating, like, just what is it, entertainment, I would say? Mm-hmm. Title is unmatched with that because they combine speeches, podcasts, blurbs, like all together that is bomb. So if y'all have title or y'all haven't used y'all free 30-day trial, Black History Month is a great month to do it. Especially if you have children, um, like that's good to like, I would imagine like getting up in the morning and as they're getting dressed, like letting them listen to like, I think it's like the greatest black speeches. Um, like he has one like with women, like it's very good. And I will say title does that and that is unmatched. It is bomb. Want me to close it down there? Yeah. Perfect. You got something else you was going to do or no? no? Okay. Um, as always, to submit your black love stories, go to blacklovematters.com. And to submit a question for Kitchen Table Talk, shoot us an email at blacklovematters at gmail.com. And to leave a comment about anything that we talked about, you can do that on blacklovematters.com. That's SoundCloud, Stitcher, Instagram, anywhere, the website. Also, we have a voicemail at 508-784-1111. 508-784-1111. One one one. Talk to y'all later. Remember, love, love is, is ever, ever evolving. evolving. Peace. Peace.